Okay. Um, let's bring the Queen Anne's County Planning Commission in, uh, to order Thursday, December 8th, 2022. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public comments. <clears throat> Have anything on? Okay. No public comments. Um, meeting minutes oh, review. Oh, I'm sorry. As long as it's not about Boyle Farm Store, we can hear. Okay. Um, meeting minutes review. Madam Chair, I make a motion that the minutes pass as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, extension requests are none. Uh, updates, legislation and legal matters. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amy Mordoff, Planning Director. Uh, happy holidays. For the next time I see you, Christmas will have passed. So. Um, I have two items. One, to update you that uh, text amendment, citizen sponsored text amendment 20. 202 became effective on the 14th of November. This was the text amendment to allow uh, recreational vehicle parking um, in the WBC district. Um, this was the one that was put forward by the Ken Island Yacht Club for um, clubs such as theirs that are bona fide. Um, the other item that I have for your attention is also relative to citizen sponsored text amendments. I wanted to put this. Um, idea before you for recommendation to the county commissioners. And, sorry. What I'm asking is that while staff is in the middle of the update to the critical area ordinance, which is chapter 14.1 of our code, um, while staff is drafting that update and working diligently to meet a deadline to have this done, uh, hopefully this summer for um, public hearing and review. Uh, a 20 year delay <laughs> in updating this code that we're hoping to end. Um, we would ask that during this time, text amendments not be accepted during the 10 day citizen sponsored period uh, relative to changes to the critical area program while staff is updating it. Um, not to say that we are not, staff is not open to being approached by citizens who are looking for specific amendments. Uh, we would certainly uh, welcome <coughs> that input and work with any citizens who are working on text amendments. We know of just such a case and would actively work to incorporate uh, those requested changes. It's just that procedurally we think uh, we would not like to see an individual text amendment come through while we're updating that code. Uh, we would like to make sure that we're comprehensively looking at the chapter and putting forward um, a complete update for public review for you and for the county commissioners. Do you need, do you need a um, recommendation from us for the commissioners? Yes. So I would ask if you are um, in agreement that this update, this comprehensive update should occur um, without receiving a piecemealed interruption. And what we're also concerned is that that might take away time from staff to expeditiously get that update um, completed. Um, you were asking if you think that is a, a good idea that you would send a favorable recommendation to the county commissioners. Uh, who would ultimately make that decision. This okay. is with respect just to text amendment citizen sponsored that would impact critical area, right? Correct. If they want to put a widget somewhere else, that's still on the table for them public. Correct. And uh, we would hope that if um, anything except for title 14.1, 14. right? right? Just for 14.1. Okay. Yeah. But you would still be willing to sit down and listen to them if they came into your office? Oh, if they, sure. If it was 
uh, reasonable and to be incorporated. Yes. Well, even if it's, it's unreasonable, we listen. <laughs> we still listen, yes. Pardon? Even if it's unreasonable, we listen to yeah, it. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's yeah. fair. That's fair. And that also, we feel like that is a, might be a more expeditious path because it will be wrapped in to the update that the staff is working on, and we're working closely with the Critical Area Commission on that update. So good and bad ideas, we would vet through the uh, Critical Area Commission and hopefully find a middle ground to move them forward. Okay, uh, can I get a motion to that effect? Uh, Madam Chair, I move that we um, provide a favorable recommendation um, based upon the planning director planning director's recommendation regarding citizen-sponsored text amendments. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thanks very much. So be it. Thank you. Um, anything else? No, that's all I have today. Okay. Well. All right, projects, concept plan, Royal Farm Store, Steve Johnson. Good morning, everyone. Hope morning. everybody's having a good holiday season so far. Um, I'm Steve Johnson, County Planner for Queen Anne's County Planning and Zoning. <coughs> um, as Ms. Dobson stated, we're here to discuss uh, file number. Excuse me, Steve, can I pause you for just sure. a moment? We, our uh, monitors are on. Do we just turn the power on? Oh, no. So we can see what you're seeing? Yep. Yep. Which one is it? Left one? Top one on the left here. Yeah. Can you hear this? Okay. Yep. Top left. Thanks. Oh. Very good. <laughs> Top up here. Yeah. Left or leftmost. Sorry, Steve. Said That's good. Okay. Is everybody good to go? Okay. We're warming up. <laughs> as Ms. Okay, Dobson, okay, as Ms. Dobson stated, we're here to discuss file number SP number 19-12-0047, uh, otherwise known as Royal Farm Store number 218 for Two Farms Incorporated. Um, the applicants proposing to administratively combine three lots to construct a 5,154 square foot convenience store, six gasoline fuel islands with 12 fueling positions, and a 1,248 square foot car wash. Uh, they are requesting concept plan approval here today. And this slide gives you a general location of the project site. Uh, it's located in the western portion of the county in Stevensville, south of Route 50, adjacent to the airport. Uh, more specifically, tax map 56, parcel 335, lots 3, 4, and 5, total 5.531 acres and are located at 336 Roman Cook Road in Stevensville. Uh, as a part of this development plan, the applicant will propose an administrative subdivision to combine the three lots into one resulting parcel. Now you can see the three lots there outlined in black. <clears throat> Parcels, are, uh, the lots are zoned urban commercial and are located in the Chester Stevensville growth area. Uh, here's some existing conditions and pictures of the site. Uh, this picture is looking west, southwest. This is looking northwest into the site. Uh, of note, that gravel pad there will be removed as part of this development proposal. Um, this is looking north up Roman Coke Road. Uh, the site's partially located in the critical area. 2.035 acres are located in the limited development area, or LDA, shown here in yellow. And 1.116 acres are in the intensely developed area, or IDA, uh, shown in red. Uh, there will be no development proposed in the LDA. <clears throat> there are 0.465 acres of non-tidal wetlands and their associated buffer on site. These are shown in these solid and dashed blue lines to the right of your screen there. Um, the applicant's proposing to disturb 0.224 acres and has received authorization from MDE for this disturbance. And a copy of that authorization was included in your packets. Uh, there are 4.009 acres of woodlands on the site. Uh, they're proposing to clear 1.186 acres, that area clearing shown in brown. Um, forest conservation requirements will be met on site through the long-term protection of 0.34 acres of on-site woodlands, that's the shaded green area there, kind of underneath the wetlands. And the planting of 0.1 acres or 18 trees in accordance with the requirements of 182-14 or fee and lieu, which will be decided site plan. Um, uh, there are no other natural resources beyond what you're seeing on that screen there. 
here's a look at the concept plan. The store, the car wash, and the gas pumps are highlighted in black with the cross hatching. Um, as you can see, the site's sort of bookended by an existing commercial building. That's a daycare to the south. Uh, to the north, there's an existing gas station with a car wash. Um, conceptually, all the urban commercial non-residential development standards are met. Uh, the property will be served by public water and sewer. Uh, Stormwater is provided on site and will be reviewed and approved by DPW. And all 64 required parking spaces are provided on site. And this information on the slide was included in your pack. It's just kind of the road exhibit. Um, the site has multiple points of ingress and egress. Uh, the northern driveway will serve all traffic entering the site. This is southbound right-hand turns and northbound left-hand turns. Uh, the southern driveway will serve traffic exiting the site. That would be southbound right-hand turns and northbound left-hand turns. Um, as most people in this room are probably aware, Route 8 is fairly heavily traveled. Um, throughout the review, staff had concerns regarding the, inter excuse me, the interaction of vehicles entering and exiting the site with oncoming vehicular traffic, bicyclists, and pedestrian activity. Um, to address those concerns, the following improvements are proposed along Route 8. 11-foot um, wide dedicated northbound and southbound travel lanes. You can see that there at the blow up at the bottom of your screen. 11-foot wide shoulders on both the northbound and southbound sides. 12-foot wide dedicated left-hand turn lanes on the northbound side. And it's important to note that the shoulder south of the exit will serve as a combined acceleration, emergency, and bike lane, and will be marked as a bike lane only. There are representatives from DPW and State Highway here in the room to answer any of your questions regarding the traffic or the roads here at the site. Um, the applicant is also prepared to answer any questions you may have. This slide gives you an overall perspective on how the proposed development fits into the surrounding area. Um, it's important to note that the homes across Route 8 there have already been built out and Kent Manor Drive has also been built out. The imagery on Queen Anne's County Property Viewer is a little dated. Uh, these are the, rendi the following slides are renderings of the project. This is the front of the building looking south. Uh, this is the rear of the building looking towards the north. You can see the car wash there in the foreground. Um, the picture on the left is what you would see from Route 8 looking west. Uh, the picture on the right is from behind the building looking east. Uh, here's a rendering of the car wash. The bottom left picture is what you would see from Route 8. And this is a look at the canopies uh, on site. And uh, with that, I'll answer any questions or turn it over to the applicants. I pose a question on the uh, waste discharge for the car wash. Is that going to be self-contained on site, or is that going to impact? Uh, if it's contained on site, Kevin, did you want to address that? Any other questions for Steve? Okay. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Morning. Joe Stevens, um, representing uh, Royal Farms. Kevin Sharon here, who is the project engineer, um, and we have a few other people here as well. Um, I've got um, I've got uh, Jeff Bainbridge, who is director of real estate for Royal Farm, as well as um, traffic concepts representatives who did the traffic analysis and and the uh, engineering. I just want to make a couple of preliminary comments. We're here for concept plan review. Um, uh, we would be back before you for full site plan after full design and engineering and incorporating comments that you may have um, uh, regarding the design and so on and so forth. So this is not a final approval. And if you notice on the staff report, um, we've been in this process since 2019 for this project. So it hasn't been something that's been taken lightly by either the county, the State Highway Administration, or the applicant. Um, of course, COVID slowed things down for everybody for several months, for a year or so. But we've been back and forth and, and, and incorporated comments and come to solutions and so on in regards to um, issues involving design, um, architecture, and so on, but most importantly, traffic and traffic improvements. And so um, I have 
two traffic consultants here today that will address two different things. One is, is they're going to talk about just the overall APF. We've done the preliminary APF analysis a couple of times, and we'll update it again before we come to you for final site plan. Yeah. Adequate public facilities, I'm sorry, for traffic. Because, you know, there's no schools, and there's only 600 gallons of sewer. So there's not, you know, they, we, don't, we don't have it for those other two things. Um, and, um, and the second aspect is we have the design engineer who designed um, the um, improvements at the direction and, and at the oversight of the county and state highway administration, all the improvements, and to talk about those. Um, and uh, uh, most importantly, I think, is Royal Farms, as you know, you know, they've got four stores right now in the county. They're a Maryland business. Um, and what they have the capability to do, and what you'll see, is they have the capability to work with the local jurisdictions to do the improvements that they think are important in areas that are designated for this type of growth and development. Um, and the, you'll see that, it's, that what they're proposing to do is extensive and is going to make improvements to this part of Route 8 uh, that will um, uh, result in a situation that's better there for pedestrians and for traffic than exists right now. So they're going to be doing above and beyond what they're, you know, above and beyond just what impacts they're putting in the area. And I think it's important to realize that they're doing that because they're, they are a, um, a large company, you know, but they're local, they're Maryland, but they're large, they have the capability, they have financial resources, and they're doing it. So with that, I, what I I'm going to... question, why concept if you don't need to ask the Well, that's a good question. Because I, I went back and forth with Public Works and with um, planning on that. We initially submitted it as concept. Um, and uh, because it's a project in an area that is, gets a lot of attention um, and because there are a number of traffic improvements being proposed, staff wanted us to come in for concept and we agreed to do it. And, and it makes sense for the applicant because we get, can, can incorporate comments you might have before we go to final engineering. So that's why we're here for concept plan. But in regards, Mr. Drummond's right, we don't need a, a master water and sewer plan amendment and our allocation at least right now, according to Public Works, is administrative because it's only 600 gallons in addition to what we have, which is, so is that right? At right. About 600 gallons. Additional, yeah. Okay. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Kevin. And staff does a, a thorough job, so we're not going to rehash what they've, what they've gone into. Good morning, Kevin Sharon, DMS and Associates. Uh, just wanted to go through some of the, the site particulars. Uh, Mr. Johnson did a good job of, uh, as usual, going through laying out the site plan. I just wanted to hit on a couple other things. Um, just to reiterate, the resulting um, parcel will be five, basically five and a half acres. Um, it's zoned UC commercial. Uh, the limited development area portion of it is about two acres. The IDA portion is about an acre, and the area outside the, the critical area is about two and a half acres. Um, it's not located in the floodplain. Um, the existing woods on site are, are about three and a half acres, three acres of which are in the critical area and a half an acre outside the critical area. Um, the non-tidal wetlands um, shown on the plan and in the site statistics combined, uh, the buffer and the wetlands themselves are about a half an acre, but the wetlands themselves, which is the protected resource, is only 0.19 acres. Um, just some things to note about the site. It, it is in the growth area. It's in the priority funding area. Uh, it's included in an enterprise zone. It's served by public water and sewer. And again, it's, it's zone commercial, and this is a permitted use within um, the, the UC district. Um, so the proposal, again, is for a convenience store with a detached car wash and a fuel canopy. The fuel will be gas and diesel, but it will not have high flow diesel. Um, we're not attracting uh, tractor trailers, um, and it will not be a truck stop. It will just be a convenience store with gas pumps. Um, other thing that's interesting to note is the five and a half acres in this district would allow a floor area of over 96,000 square feet, um, and we're proposing a combined of 6,400 square feet. So that's 5,100 for the um, convenience store and 1,200 square feet for the car wash. So that's less than 7% of the permitted floor area is what's proposed uh, for this project. Um, of the five and a half acre property, the limits of disturbance is just over three acres. So just about 50, 56% of the site is within the project development area. And again, no disturbance is proposed within the limited development area of the critical area. The parking proposed 
uh, meets the required, so we're not exceeding any uh, impervious cover limitations. Um, there's 64 spaces required and 64 provided. Um, we're disturbing less than an acre of woods and retaining two and a half acres of woods. Um, we have, again, for the, for the wetlands, the wetland pocket itself is 0.19 acres. Um, and we have uh, minimized the disturbance of the wetlands to 0 0.08 acres. Um, we submitted that disturbance to MDE. They reviewed it and confirmed and agree that it's a, a, a minimization of the disturbance and have issued a permit for, for that disturbance. Um, and I will note that as part of the stormwater management requirements, we're creating a wetland adjacent to the existing wetland <coughs> will be considered a uh, submerged gravel wetland per MDE standards. Uh, we've provided um, a conceptual stormwater management report that shows compliance with um, current re regulations, the ESD to the MEP. We're providing on-site four bioretention areas <coughs> and then the submerged gravel wetland that I just uh, mentioned. Um, the portion that's in the critical area has to meet the 10% pollutant reduction, and we are, uh, we've demonstrated that we are providing a reduction of <coughs> 0.8 pounds of phosphorus versus the required 0.5 pounds of phosphorus, so we're exceeding that requirement. Um, a conceptual landscape plan has been provided, that's before you right now. Um, a lighting plan will be designed uh, as we move through the site plan process. Um, lighting will be dark sky compatible and no spill onto adjacent properties. Um, on the electrical side, also, um, Tesla has <coughs> contacted Royal Farms and expressed interest in providing uh, charging stations at this site. Um, in terms of the architecturals, Steve, if you don't mind putting up those perspectives, we don't forget the car. I'd go in there because I have some questions that? about that. Don't forget the oh, car yeah, I'll, I'll mention the car wash. So regarding the, the car wash, um, to answer your previous question, the, the car wash is approximately 90% recycled and with about 10% of the, the water usage goes to the sewer system. So. so we've provided, the architect has provided a couple of perspectives. These are site specific. This is looking from the north entrance, <laughs> kind of uh, southwest, if you will, into the site with a canopy and the uh, the get store. That, did we get that gas price? Yeah, yeah. I, I was, I was going to have them, I was going to have them amend that. But I, I figured it would be worth a laugh. <laughs> Maybe those will come down to that one day, but probably not. And then the next perspective yeah, is uh, from the southern egress, um, looking to the car wash and uh, and the store. Um, and you'll, you'll notice we've worked with staff. Um, staff had some con concerns about the architectural facade facing Route 8 because the store itself is kind of turned um, parallel to Route 8. And so Royal Farms and their architect have provided uh, a, a peaked roof on the facade facing Route 8 to kind of dress that up and make that more of a, um, a, front, uh, a front look. Well, let, let's address that. Um, uh, about 20 years ago, the a small um, commercial building, two down, where, where the pizza place is, mm -hmm. uh, I built, started building that building with a flat roof, and we made them stop and put a pitched roof on it. What? We got a flat roof here. It, the the design guidelines allow for a, oh, I understand they may allow for it, a flat but, uh, roof um, and yeah. I mean it's been it's been vetted through the the process and, and usually when it says I believe that's a much smaller building and it's easier to do a pitched roof Royal Farms yeah. uh, must have forgotten what 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 went on when they came through with the Graysonville um, Royal Farms is similar to Graysonville the architecture yeah it is a lot with the roof on that I'm trying to hide some of the HVAC on the roof and the mm -hmm. pitched of the of the canopy wah -wah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, sorry. Okay. We'll I think the, the Graysonville Rural Farms as well. We did. Oh, the one at Holly's, yeah. All right, well, Jeff Bainbridge is here for real estate, and I think that's their, about that's the prototype. Yeah. Okay, well, not we can, far, not we're going to have that That's not far off the Rural Farms prototype. Yeah. Well, we can we can talk about some of those okay. modifications. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I remember. Uh, I just think Greg Chairs will be a little upset if uh, <laughs> he, he gets a flat roof two two doors north. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, we'll, we'll <laughs> we we can have that conversation. Um, but regardless, the the rest of the building is um, you know constructive high quality materials and varying colors and textures and and uh, in keeping with the UC design guidelines. Um, regarding the the state highway improvements, um, that was uh, and back to your earlier question about the concept plan. The the when we started this project actually back in 2018. The, the biggest issue was the, the access. And so it's basically taken that long. So our thought initially was to go for a concept plan review um, to see the Planning Commission's view on some of the accesses we were proposing. In the meantime, we've been able to work it out with DPW and State Highway and come to a plan where we believe everybody agrees. Um, the, the access to, on the, the north side of the property will be for ingress only, so it'll be uh, a left in and a right in, and the south access will be for egress only, getting back out onto Route 8. Um, and that, that helps, the, the two access points helps pr promote um, on-site efficient flow for uh, deliveries and, and other patrons. Um, the county also asked us to, to make connections using the service road that was established to the property to the north and to the south. Um, Royal Farms has contacted the property owner to the south and they have agreed that they would, they don't mind the connection being made to the south. The property owner to the north, um, although that property owner has changed, I believe, um, did not, at the time, did not want to have the service road connect. So we're showing the connection to the south, but we're, we're showing it as a possible future connection to the north. Um, and then the other thing to point out, and, and traffic concepts representatives will go through the improvements that we've worked with DPW and State Highway and DPW, the county's traffic consultant, um, they'll go through those in more detail. But just to point out, the, the Royal Farms frontage along Route 8 is 385 feet. And just to give you, and, and typically you would, you would make your improvements within that frontage. But the, the improvements that are being proposed um, to fix basically an existing traffic issue at this location, um, we're going from the 385 foot frontage to 1,875 feet of state highway improvements to, uh, to provide the lanes, provide the shoulders, provide dedicated turn lanes, to make this area more efficient and, and safer for, for the uh, vehicles. So with that, I will turn it over to yeah. traffic concepts unless you have any if questions. If I was gonna have traffic concepts come up unless you have questions on engineering and design. Okay, so why don't we start with Mark Keeley. Mark's just gonna give you a very brief overview of a, what he's gone through for APF review, adequate public facilities for traffic and that standard. But the second person that's going to come up is Kyle Schmid. And Kyle Schmid is an engineer at PE, and he designed all the improvements. He's done the conceptual designs, and then in between now and final site plan, he'll do the actual engineer designs of these improvements, um, assuming that um, th that's what, uh, that's what you know, the county and the state decide ultimately they want. So Mark, just give, a, if you could, in terms sure. of what you've had to do for APF. OK, my name's Mark Keeley. I'm a project manager at Traffic Concepts. Um, just Real briefly, I've, I've been with Traffic Concepts for 17 years. Um, my background is planning. I have a master's degree in planning. Um, I have a professional transportation planner certification, and I was a, a certified um, American Institute of Professional Planners. Um, I, I, but prior to working with Traffic Concepts, I was a planner in Queen Anne's County from 2002 to 2005. So. Um, the traffic impact study is a requirement of the adequate public facility ordinance. Um, as you know, the um, APFO requires intersections to operate at a level service C standard in the um, growth area. Um, so we, the traffic study analyzes the peak hours. Um, AM is uh, 7 AM to 9, PM is 4 to 6, and then for commercial projects, we analyzed the Saturday midday, which is 11 to 2. Um, the, the kickoff to the traffic study is a scoping meeting. We meet with the county and SHA officials, and that was done way back in November of 2018. And as Joe said, we were um, kind of cut 
short because of the COVID um, for about a year. So that's why that, that scope was um, done in 2018. And during, at the scoping meeting, the county and the state highway determine what intersections um, are studied. They determine the background growth rates. In this case, there was eight backgrounds. They determine a growth rate, which was 2% that is applied to the, um, the traffic volume. So we count- When you say background, you mean other projects you had to include? Nearby, background developments are nearby projects that received preliminary plan approval, but they're not yet built. So we, we do a trip analysis and determine their impact on the, on the uh, road network, and that's included in the study. So th this traffic study, the intersections, it started- The traffic study was taken when? Um, well, we've done three studies. We, we did the study originally in January 2018. It was revised in 2021. But part of 21. Uh, Jan June 2021, and then it was revised in April 2022, and it will be revised again before we come before you for site plan approval. Um, so the, the study area is made up of Maryland 8 at Skipjack, um, and Maryland 8. Uh, we analyzed the, the, uh, the ramps at the interchange, US 58. We looked at Pier 1 at Thompson Creek, Kent Manor, uh, Airport Road, the site access, and then Bay City. So that, those intersections represent the study area. Um, the study includes three sections. It has an existing um, background and future. The existing determines the, the baseline for the intersection levels of service. And I said they have to be a, adequate is C or better. Um, the background is, is what I said before. It includes a growth rate. Um, it includes the background developments. We also counted the interchange at US 50 during the summer on a Saturday, and we used those summer counts to balance out traffic along Route 8. And then the future traffic is the site-generated trips. So to determine traffic generated by background and by the site, we use the IT, ITE trip generation manual. It's a, it's a manual that's used nationwide. It's accepted by Queen Anne's County and State Highway. Um, for this type of use, a convenience store with pumps, um, it generates really three types of trips, a new trip, a diverted trip, which is also classified as a new trip, and pass-by. Um, the pass-by percentage for this is 75%. So that means traffic that's already uh, traveling along Route 8, people see the gas station or they want to use, they need a convenience item, coffee, so they they pass by the site, they enter, and then they exit and continue on their way. So that's a pass-by trip. A new trip is a, a home-based trip to, to the site back home or from work to a site and back home. So the significance of this is that Route 8, south of our project, most of those trips are going to be pass-by trips. You're going to have Certainly you could have some new trips, but there'll be few trips that are or that originate south of our site along the eight that go to the site and then head back south. I mean, it could be somebody in Bay City needs milk or something in the peak hour and, and they'll go to the Royal Farms and then go back. But that that's gonna be a rare trip. <clears throat> so I would say the impact south from our site south it's going to be very, very minimal because those are those are predominantly pass-by trips. New trips would be added um, from the site to, to US 50. So if you're traveling on US 50 and you're going to go over the Bay Bridge for work or school um, and you need gas, so you're going to divert from your normal path, visit the rural farms, and then go back to US 50. Technically, as a traffic engineer, that's a diverted trip, but we we include that as a new trip. So, so what I'm saying is, south of US 50, it's going to be very little impact in terms of new traffic added. There'll be some new traffic from the rural farms to um, US 50. Um, 
And then my colleague's going to talk about, he's a professional engineer, he's going to talk in detail about the access improvements that um, Kevin just mentioned. Um, so we, as I mentioned, we've done three iterations of the traffic impact study and we're going to do a fourth um, after this meeting. I talked to Steve Cahoon. I understand there's some fields at Bats Neck, Bats Neck Park that are under construction and they'll be part of the background and then we'll update the counts um, because of the time frame, the, the long time frame that's gone by. But at this point, um, we don't have adequate public facility approval yet. That will, that will come later. But we've, we've talked in depth with State Highway and the county planners. Um, we've addressed all comments to this point. Um, and the conclusions of the traffic study are the off-site intersections, and primarily because of the pass-by trips, they're going to operate at a levels level of service C or better. Can you explain what the level of service means? Sure. We have some new Planning Commission members. Yes. So the levels of service intersection analyses are uh, conducted in this county with the critical lane volume. <clears throat> and what the critical lane volume technique measures is the through traffic and opposing lefts. So those are the critical trips because they oppose each other. The levels of service is, it's a qualitative measure of how an intersection operates. So zero critical trips to 999 is an A level service. <coughs> and there's a scale, so every 150 additional critical trips, the level of service goes up. So, uh, um, so you can see how, how that works. It's 150 critical trips bumps you up to the next level of service. And then does it impact wait times and so yeah, on? It's basically Typically. how long do you have to sit at the intersection? It's, it's, uh, there's other methodologies that look at um, levels of service that measure delay, but in this case it measures um, the number of critical trips, which does deal with delay at an intersection. So the more delay you have, um, that or the in, level of service. Yeah, so that so A, B, and C in this county are acceptable. Um, D, E, and F are um, unacceptable lo levels of service. So, and at that point, they usually require improvements to improve the level of service. They they do, um, and if there's a D level of service, um, we're required to to mitigate air impact. So you have to put everything back the way it was before you got there. And that's done through light improvements and uh, adding lanes and things of that nature? Adding capacity or, yeah, uh, changing the intersection control from could be a roundabout, could be a traffic signal, okay. could be, okay. you know, signage. So to, to conclude, um, the, the findings of the study were at um, a level of service C. Um, and we expect that condition, condition to continue as we move forward with the updates of this study. Question, how close were you to becoming a D versus a C based on your current study? Um, I, I don't, there were no intersections that were teetering on D. We're solid, solidly in a C level service in terms of critical trips. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Uh, Kyle Schmid, who is also, he's an engineer with traffic, con uh, traffic uh, concepts, he's going to put up on the board the actual improvements and walk you all through them so you know what's being proposed. Now, those haven't been finally designed because they're conceptual design at this point, but will be designed and then have to be bonded and secured, you know, when we come in for site plan approval. All right. Thanks, Joe. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Kyle Schmid. I'm a... Uh, the lead design engineer and project manager of traffic concepts. I have a bachelor's degree in civil engineering. Um, I've been in traffic concepts for 14 years now. I'm a certified professional engineer for over 10 years. So you may need to speak up a little. <coughs> he gets that from his dad. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, and I'm also a certified professional traffic operations engineer for over six years. Um, both exams were for um, over eight hour testing and the PTOE exam is the highest exam I can take in my field. So um, just to, you know, Joe's done a great job in the earlier slides, did a great highlight on the, the initial overview of the conceptual improvements we're doing along Maryland 8. Um, but just 
So up on the screen now, this is a concept plan that we had put together. Um, this is just the existing condition, which is basically just a baseline to show what the current layout is. And the following slide um, is our proposed condition, which I can go into a little bit more detail on what we're improving as far as improvements go on Maryland 8. Um, but just to step back before I get... Can speak up just a little bit? Okay. Sorry. All right. I'm a quiet guy, sorry. <laughs> um, so just to step back before I get, I will go into detail about all the improvements on this concept plan that's up on the screen now, but just to just do a brief overview of um, all the effort we put in with coordinating with the state highway and Queen Anne's County on coming up with this, this layout that's up on the screen currently. So um, our team understands that this section of Maryland 8 is very sensitive in terms of traffic and we have spent over two years coordinating with State Highway and the county through conceptual site and roadway design reviews in order to maximize safety for vehicles, cyclists, and pedestrians. Uh, Royal Farms proposed conceptual design improvements along Maryland 8. Um, they improved the layout that is currently in place today to make it more safer, and they go above and beyond all required State Highway improvement um, tables and, and specs that we're required to meet as far as improvements go. Um, the State Highway Administration as well as the county have reviewed the current proposed condition plan and have no further comments on the design and see as an acceptable layout. The proposed condition plan will be fully engineered and approved by the State Highway Administration and county before we are back for site plan approval. Um, and I'll go into a little bit of detail on the concept plan up on the screen now. Could you zoom in maybe just to just so I can kind of, um, just maybe to the center is fine. A bit more? So. Uh, yeah, if you just want to maybe center it towards the right in the site. Yeah, it's maybe scroll down a little bit. Too. There you go, perfect. That's great. Um, so Kevin Shear and our civil engineer touched on this earlier, but the site access points that we have shown on there now were a big, um, it, we did a lot of negotiations and, and discussions with the state to make sure they were all comfortable and, and felt that it was a safe and accessible layout. So we have right now one ingress movement where vehicles will enter and one egress movement where vehicles will exit, which we feel will improve the traffic flow internally and also make it um, a more cleaner and expected traffic movements for people in Maryland 8 as they enter and exit the Royal Farm Store. Um, we have to the right, you can see we're providing a right turn lane into the inbound access, which we call a deceleration lane, which is 435 feet long with a 100 foot tapered section, which meets the full deceleration requirements by the state highway um, for a posted 40 mile an hour roadway, which this is for the southbound direction. All of this is in SHA's right of way, right? Correct. So Land from somebody. Or anything like no. That. no, and it'll be maintained by the state highway indefinitely after the improvements are done by the developer. Um, so we're also providing, you can see in the center of the screen there, a left turn lane into the site access point, which is 150 feet long with a 100 foot taper. And we're also providing two additional left turn lanes to the adjacent sites, which are not in place today. So to the south, um, you can see, yeah, thank you. Um, providing another 150 foot long, 12 foot wide um, left turn bay with 150 foot taper. And that's for the 356 shopping center in the kindergarten. And then we're also providing an additional left turn lane to the north of our site. Um, that will go to Airport Road and also the Ken Island Depot and the BP gas station, which is not in place Come today. Back. South? Sure. Um, that's that driveway to the adjacent, adjacent uh, no, south. No, south, right there. Here. That's the entrance to the cemetery. Right. How are people going to get in there going left? Well, we're just the left turn was really intended for the um, 
the the okay. shopping in center. In other words, you're not inhibiting a left-hand turn into the cemetery. No, absolutely not. I mean, today there's just a three lane, and you're allowed to make a left turn in lane out of the three lane. We're just kind of providing a refuge area, so to minimize delay, that's all. But yes, you'll absolutely be able to make a left turn in the cemetery. Um, so I guess the point is we're, we're actually improving not only, we're providing a left turn lane for our site inbound, but we're also providing, you know, pretty substantial left turn bay lengths on the adjacent sites, which is above and beyond what we're really required to do in this case. So we're just trying to improve the flow of the traffic because we recognize that northbound 8 can queue up a little bit with 50, and our goal was to try and get vehicles turning out of the through lane so they can make a safe turn and not block traffic. <coughs> and the last thing I wanted to touch on was the bike compatibility and the, the wide shoulders. We're, we're maintaining 11-foot wide shoulders on both the northbound and southbound sides of Maryland 8, um, which is over and above the five foot uh, minimum bike compatibility with for state highway on this type of road. And we recognize that so the shoulders are in use today and they'll, be, they'll continue to be for emergency vehicles and you know, when I know there's special conditions for in traffic backs up 150 as well. So, um, so that's in a nutshell kind of what we were presenting here. Like I said, we meet all state requirements for improvements for our site and we go over and above really our, our required improvements Did in this you case. Do you think this area after the improvements are done will function better than it does now without the improvements? Yes, absolutely. Left turn bays are a, a very beneficial um, improvement to this area. And we're providing a full length deceleration lane, a right turn lane to our site. And not just for our site, but for our other Yeah, sites. and they'll go across the front. You can see they go across the um, that BP gas station and the convenience store as well as Airport Road, which do not have any shoulder, it's like a, I think a three or four foot shoulder today, so they don't have a turn lane to get in there. Uh, so we'll be providing that as well. Okay. Yep. I, can get, I can get on my bike and go through there with less fear of getting run down than I am right now. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. No. More, more pavement with more shoulder. Yeah, exactly. And that area is a problem if you're on the... It is trail or on the north side and go over the overpass on a bike and you get to this area Oof. and parks and rec was part of the review process through yeah we summer. went through a pretty substantial um to get to the maintaining 11 foot wide the entire way um you know and even in between our our two access points which is like i said above and beyond the normal five foot bike compatible with for state highways that we maintained there so it's still a little hairy once you get in front of Bay City before you get to Mattapique and can get on the trail. I have Jeff Bainbridge, who's the executive, I mean, who's the um, um, head of real estate director of real estate. If you have questions for Kyle Schmid, you can stay here and answer questions. Mr. Schmid, I have a question or two for you. Sure. Um, fact. Uh, first is why the dual entrance exit? exit? It seems confusing as a driver to be making a left hand turn with the median there on the on the ingress that you have labeled and having to go on the left side as an american driver and if i'm heading right if i'm heading south on route eight and i'm looking at that beautiful stormwater pond and i miss that entrance because your your sign is in the middle of that island now i want to turn into your egress why why not one wide entrance exit versus the pair that seems confusing right so i then we, this was a big, uh, <laughs> the site layout was a big talking point between the county and the state. So when we first started, we had actually, we had two access points, um, but both were full movement, so inbound and outbound. And the state felt that if we could try and make that a separate inbound and outbound, it would improve site flow. So you don't have people internal. trying, internal site yeah, yeah, flow, yeah. correct. Um, and then it would also, when you have two, like full movement access points and you're trying to make left turns out of both or right turns out of both, it gets, you know, as you're trying to turn on, say left on the eight and you have two people trying to make left turns, it gets a little, and somebody trying to turn in, there's just a lot of overlap a lot of times and safety, they were concerned about safety for those movements. So they, they thought that, you know, having two separate um, access points, one inbound, one outbound, would clean that up quite a bit. And I, I agree with them on that point. As far as the point about 
potentially missing the the ingress movement. I, I mean, that's that could definitely happen. Um, but the idea was when we when we get to final when we do design plans for sign and pavement marking, then I'll need to approved by the state highway. We'll make it as clear as we possibly can that you know with do not enter signs and in only that to try and direct people into the correct access point. Um, but that would be done through signing and pavement markings and trying to get the the point across. But I agree, somebody could they could miss it. Um, Just an awkward left. If, if I'm coming up northbound Route Eight, yeah, to turn left in your ingress is awkward in my head um, okay thank you for addressing that next question is you're you're commenting about widening the shoulder and 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 providing deceleration and acceleration lanes yet you're not going to mark them well they'll be I'm supposed to know it's an acceleration deceleration lane and how do I manage mitigate that with the bike traffic I don't want to hit Chris when he's enjoying his Saturday afternoon <laughs> ride right so <laughs> So, you know, shoulders on the state highways can be used as XL diesel lanes. Um, and we will have bike markings in the shoulders. And there, there will be, you know, a shared, the shoulder will be shared with vehicles axling and deselling and bike compatibility. Um, but it will, you know, it's not going to be on with through traffic. There's going to be a whole 11 foot wide shoulder for it. Um, there, you know. I think it's a safe condition. It's done uh, on state highway roads all over the place. And uh, is it possible when we come in for site plan to to have a sample of what that marking would look like in a more blown up plan? Yeah, I mean we have. I mean you can barely see it on here, but there's those little arrows and there's a bike symbol on there. You can kind of that's kind of you you usually space you put them usually after access points just to reiterate that it's a a bike shoulder um so we kind of did it conceptually on here but yeah we do a full design plan for it um and that's a one-way southbound bike lane or is that a bi-directional bike lane no there's going to be on both sides of maryland 8 there's 11 foot wide shoulder like if you um, i'm just making sure that arrow is correct right that's a south yeah, it's, it's hard to proposal it's so project, small that's a southbound only yeah, that's a southbound only. It's just, it's a it's going. It's just hard to see. We always go with the flow of traffic. Not yeah, yeah. I'm just just clarifying. I hadn't yeah. hadn't noticed that. I don't I don't I'm, ride I'm, bikes there. Most most you can kind of see it bikes, there. We, we, we avoid this. <laughs> yeah. Because it's because you're sort of stuck on one side or the other of 50 because of this area. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks. Jeff, you want to come up? Um, Jeff Bainbridge, he's director of real estate for Royal Farms. I've known him for about 20 years and worked with him on several projects, Queen Anne's Kent and Talbot and all over the place. And he's very knowledgeable about the business, how it operates, um, as well as um, the site and architecture. He can talk to you about that, where his head is in that, and what they might be able to do. So I'm just going to give you the floor and let you go ahead and sure. have a question as the Planning Commission Good morning. Has. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, Jeff Bainbridge, Director of Real Estate for Royal Farms. Seen some of you before in other projects. Welcome to see you again. Um, we're a Maryland-based company, Two Farms, Inc., operating those Royal Farms. We're based in Baltimore. Um, we have about 260 stores. But even though we're based in Baltimore, the Eastern Shore is very important to us. This is our fourth store. Um, we have four operating stores in Queen Anne County. We um, employ about 75 employees. Uh, we generate about $80,000 in real estate tax that goes directly to the county. Um, we'd be love this for, the, for this to be our fifth. Um, everywhere we go, we try to find a win-win, as Joe and others have talked about, um, as far as design, whether it's architectural, traffic improvements, um, and other comments that might be coming up from uh, the staff or, or um, you, the board. Um, if there's more architectural comments that need to be made, we'd be happy to look at them. We've got to try to find a win-win, uh, um, but we're uh, like, excited to be here um, and uh, here to answer any questions you might have. Do you know if there's much of a difference between um, Graysonville and here? You know, I, I tried to text after you asked the question, and I didn't get a reply back. I did the Graysonville store. I'm not privy to the actual architecture, but we can look at that. Um, again, if there's something, we already made some design um, changes on the architectural there based on comments before. 
we'll be happy to look at that again. If there's something we can incorporate to, to meet your needs or the community's needs, we'll be happy to look at that. Mr. Bainbridge, have you met with the fire department yet? We local not, fire department. We have not met with the local fire department here yet. No. Have you, when is your plan to do that? Before site plan. Before we come back to you. I was right. contacted by Mr. Schultz earlier this week right. with him. I hadn't talked to him. We exchanged phone messages. And we're going to do it before we come back, before we're ready to come back to you. Didn't you try to do it before this meeting? We, we, I'll let Kevin, if he can come, if he corrects me, if I'm wrong. But I think that they had all the information and got the information on it, and we only heard from them. And we should have reached out. We just didn't. And uh, you know, before then, it, it's something that um, whether we did it before or we do it before, you know, before we get back to you, it's going to have the same result. We're going to work with the fire department. We still have a long way to go. Yeah, we still got a long way to go. So. Any questions? Mr. Johnson, you're able to pull up a, that Google Earth image of Graysonville store? Uh, should be able to. Just for a I do recall with the Wawa, there was the, the uh, what do you call it, the thing over the pumps. Canopy. The canopy, canopy. Had to be it was actually angled yeah. to sort of. We, we asked them to change that because they came in flat as well. So their their standard canopy oh. is angled. It came in I mean, flat. We had to pitch it back. I remember that description. Where's that wrong? Okay. Well, they probably like that. This way. And, and just while well, 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 um, Mr. Johnson's getting that. Masonville. That's it there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's no high-speed diesel at this site. Yeah, right? I was going to bring up. Somebody brought that um, that question up in the in the lobby out there. So I think Kevin talked about that. There's six dispensers here. They're all... Um, for fuel, there is diesel offered there, but there is no high flow. There's no reason for a truck to come in here. Um, there's no high flow diesel. We don't sell it. Um, and there's no reason for a truck to come in there. And having 260 some odd stores, 220 of them have fuel, those trucks don't come in. We have a history of knowing that, and they don't come into ours, Wawa's, or whatever. If you don't have high flow, they don't come in. But no we do offer, we do no offer off road, diesel. isn't it? Or just on-road diesel or off-road as well? Is, you know, we, we do offer diesel. It's just on high-speed high, high, high speed yeah. diesel. Off-road diesel. Not sure what the... Non-tax diesel for tractors. I don't think we do. ATVs and things. Yeah, I can double-check on that. I don't think we do. It's kind of blocked there, Mr. Lee. So you can go down the side road, maybe? Yeah, it's yeah this is looking flat. Let me see if I can... <clears throat> remember going through there it. There you go. The canopy was sort of... I don't remember all the conversations we let now. That go by? I don't remember the conversations, but maybe it was the canopy that sort of blocked, not blocked, but broke up the... So that was built a few years ago, so I, I, I got to believe there's some architectural changes we've made since um, this one was built, but generally it's it's the same version. I see the flat roof. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking of the Wawa, I think. We had, to, we had to hide some HVAC on the roof, and we asked them to pitch that the canopy for the fuel pumps. Yeah, you can't see our HVAC from ours. We, we got the parapet walls up there. and Yeah, that's what we had to do, right. parapets. But again, these things come up. We've, we've Again, we've tried to find a way to, to work with the community and work with um, staff to, to allow us to still have a Royal Farm Store. It needs to look like a Royal Farm Store, but um, if there's something unique about the, uh, the site or the county or the, the jurisdiction or whatever, we try to find a win-win. Well, and this one is kind of unique because you're doing it sideways, right? That's exactly it, right. Yeah, so normally, like this, and you'll see the Wawa and other stores, the canopy is the main thing. You try to face the main road. So we turned that in this particular case. It worked from an operational standpoint, but it's not a desired layout for us. So, so you, you, um, you added a canopy to the Route 8 side, right, at staff's request? Well, we didn't. Uh, wait well, a minute. Well, we got Rob Gunther. Uh, Gunther was. Rob Gunther, uh, principal planner for the county. Go to the, uh, the elevations. Yes. So we looked extensively at the architecture for this. Um, this building's very similar, and so is the one in Queen Anne to the one that's getting proposed. Um, staff had extensive comment on the roof line. We suggested um, looking at the one in Queenstown or the one in Easton as similar models because the design standards say it needs to fit in the neighborhood which is much more residential in nature. Um, in addition, all the commercial buildings down there have full pitched roofs. So that's what we could get out of them. So we thought we could just bring it here to you and let the board decide. Um, 
if that's sufficient it's sufficient if not they could make some changes but they can do full things huh? why don't you pull up queenstown if you want and we'll take a look at that one because that's something that you do you want to take a quick look at well, the one that's being built in easton looks nothing like these neither wow, does the existing works. one in easton huh? neither does the existing one in easton well, the one in easton's white where's it being built what does what that's does on route 50 there, east they're building a, oh, a okay. great big one right that's there on the highway right 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 <laughs> i've been there in a while Norris, that, Norris, that should uh, open up any yeah, property right. Canopy. The fancy canopy um, <laughs> looks much more residential in nature. Um, that seemingly would fit better into the neighborhood down there, um, in staff's opinion. I like that canopy. Obviously, something on the side facade would have to be done to make it much, look much more like the frontage if the building is still to have the same orientation. But and the. The business to the north, is it a 7-Eleven? Forget what that is. It's a BP. BP. I think it's a BP. Does that have the same residential pitch roof as the business? Can I depot? Whatever's right next to the airport. Yeah. yeah. Immediately north to the proposed project. Yeah, it's got a... Can we go to that BP? Yeah. I just wonder. As that roof is pitched, as is the shore stop, just a little bit further north, directly across from the airport. Valero? Yes. Yeah. The commercial building adjacent to this has a full pitched roof, the daycare and the South, commercial right. strip. Yeah. And then the one next to it after we made a stop and built it. Right, right. So yeah, that. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Thank you. I mean, we can take those comments back. That's why we came for concept plan and didn't fully yeah. engineer the site before we, before, we, um, before we came in for site plan. So again, these, I'm just going to go back to that previous question I asked Mr. Sneed that right this business the kindergarten and the, the convenience stores liquor store sandwich shop to the south only have one ingress and egress I, I, I don't know it's a it's it's a curveball to me well, have two. I think they're not maybe, two? They're, yeah. they're maybe that's the not the best yeah, engineering you know, are you back to the arrow you know, I don't know <clears throat> I fully understand why they don't want to connect to your property too. Oh yeah, <laughs> they're going to get hammered. <laughs> Necessarily. Well, I'm all for yeah, it. we have now we've done a number of stores. We've got existing gas stations, fuel stores next to us, and most of them stay open. They they need to raise their bar, but uh, we did the same when Wawa came in here. Wawa's a Pennsylvania company. We're Maryland. They came into the market. We had to step up. Mm -hmm. Does, does the Kent Island Depot um, have a does it sell beer and wine? I so. They do. Does it what? I'm sorry. Sell beer and wine. Okay. They do. We will not. No, right. they can't we get a we can't get a license. Canada. State law. And while you're here, um, Mr. Bainbridge, the, the uh, I'm quite, I'm curious as to why you cited the car wash where you did, as opposed to in this example or in most of the other ones that come across my mind. That's sort of an ancillary, secondary thing. They, it's often in the back. It's often in a corner. It's not sort of as you. It's actually in front of, closer to Route 8 than your main building. Uh, well, we like to have it visible to the dispensers. So I mean, having it in the back of our site. Sorry, who's the dispenser? I'm sorry, where the fuel the, canopy the is. Fuel. So oh, oh, oh. we like to have our car wash so when people are dispensing their fuel, pumping their fuel, they can see, oh, I can get a car wash here too. So putting it in the back of the site generally isn't attractive to business and and uh, and customers and, and whatnot but in this particular case it is in the back of what we call the site because we think the front of the site as an operational standpoint is where the canopy By the is. Pump is right okay. right so if we put it in the back there I'm not sure how it fit um, I'm just curious to why you did yeah. you tend to see them sort of in the side right not sort of as the focal point as I'm passing Chris on his bike as I go down route 8 so again this site is kind of turned 90 degrees so right. we, we had no choice to put it on the side on route 8 couldn't do that because it would block everybody and nobody wants to look at the car wash in the front and center and then in the back of the site um as you're looking at on the, on the aerial here on the on the site plan here i'm not sure how it would fit with the uh, tank truck tanker truck coming through because the u.s 
the, the storage tanks are at the top of the canopy there. Right. Um, it also allow for minimizing clearing as well. Look, it's, it's right. a simple question. I'm just, there's yeah, no, no wrong answer. I'm just good. curious. No. It's a unique layout yeah. from yeah. the traditional. I think, again, turning the site 90 degrees um, <coughs> really kind of limited some of the options we could have. That was my next question. Why yeah. is it turned this way in the first place, if you prefer it the other way? Well, I think there was thought that we wouldn't try to put the canopy in front of Route 8 with the homes across the street with lights, even though the, the lights we use stay on. You know, they don't shut off the site at all. But um, uh, and I think we also had some staff comments, I believe, that we tried to move it to the to the side there. So thank you. That's all that we have. If you have further questions, we're here and we can answer them as you get comments. And OK, before we go further, I'd like to take a five minute break.
<laughs> Unless you have anything else. Well, we yeah, okay, yeah. Did you finish with your presentation? Yes, we were finished with the formal okay. presentation. So do we have any questions of the commissioners? I'd actually so. wouldn't mind have hearing from someone in DPW. I see the county staff in the back, either Mr. Edgar or Mr. Porter, whoever would be both more well prepared or professionally prepared to speak to the traffic uh, ingress, egress, XL, D cell. I'd also like to hear from State Highway. Okay, well then I'll step back. And okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Good morning, Plan Commission. Uh, Lee Edgar, I'm the Chief of Engineering with the Department of Public Works. Uh, Trey Porter is our Senior Development Review Engineer. We also uh, have with us uh, Steve Cahoon, who manages the Adequate Public Facilities Studies, and he'll, he'll be back in the room in a few moments. So, Trey is most intimately familiar with the project, but we've all been involved with it, so we can all speak to questions that you have and, and everything along those lines. Um, I think one of the important things to point out is that, uh, indeed, over the last three years, there have been it was seven proposals or so that have been rejected and come back. So it's taken a long road to get to the point to where it's at today. Uh, I would say that, oh, sir, can, yes. What seven proposals? What are you talking about there? They've made seven different formal submittals to- Royal Farms has. Correct. Okay. okay. Correct. And so it's taken a long time to get to this point. There's been seven formal review submittal processes where they make a submittal and it's distributed to the review agencies. Review agencies make comments and it goes back and they submit again. So it's it's taken taken a while. The over a period of four years. Three to four years, right. Mm-hmm. I would say, make sure it's correct representation there, at least from a public works standpoint, we would agree that what is being proposed now is likely the best arrangement that can be made for dual direct access off Route 8. That does not mean that we believe that this would necessarily result in a safer or better condition. Uh, I would say that physical improvements don't always equate to an improved condition. While there's been significant work to take into consideration safety and access, bottom line is even though there's these improvements, there are the additional trips and access points, conflicting movements and, and those kinds of things that with the road improvements, there are the turning movements that don't exist today. So I think we need to be very careful when looking at this and suggesting that, oh, once this is built, the Route 8 corridor is going to be safer and, and, and more fluid. I, I, I would disagree with that. But uh, Trey, uh, go, go ahead and uh, if you, if you want to. Now that he set the stage. Sure, sure. So Trey Porter, DPW. I, uh, I've reviewed this since I believe January of uh, 20, so throughout the pandemic. And uh, we, we looked at this in many different um, uh, layouts. We've looked at single access, um, as, uh, as Mr. Lee had de described earlier. We looked at uh, two points of access. We've looked at a number of things, connections, uh, having, having that um, existing connections to the, to the south and pr that connection to the north. We've looked at several different building orientations. We've looked at different locations for stormwater, um, even though the, the primary issue here is, is site access and traffic. Uh, obviously, to get to concept, we've also reviewed stormwater management. Um, we've looked at minimizing impact to sensitive areas. We've looked at a, a number of things. Um, the one thing that kept this project coming back was the traffic issues. We've coordinated with State Highway. We have a, a traffic consultant that we've also um, uh, used to, to give us a third set of eyes from regulatory standpoint. We've, um, we've looked at um, what's, what would be the most safe condition. We've looked at um, um, 
whether or not having uh, separating the the ingress and the egress was wise. We looked at the way that traffic was mingling and how, <clears throat> excuse me, how how the uh, um, the left turn needed a place to stack. The, the northbound left turn lane needed a place to stack. The applicant has been responsive to uh, to State Highway and DPW's request, but there's still <clears throat> there's, excuse me there still is a hesitation in terms of the fact that we feel that they they've done re what we request, but there's a concern about the volume and the trip generations and just the the um, the traffic patterns and the in the merging and, and all of traffic that that two that one ingress and one egress in this location creates this site the zoning issue is is the site is appropriately zoned for for this use um, I'm not going to comment on that that's not my purview but um, I will say that if this was another carpet business, if there was an expansion of the similar type of a, of a development that's to the south that was less uh, intense, then we probably wouldn't be having the discussion. We would not be having to an, an ingress and an egress. We would be um, looking more to um, minimize the access points. But um, but this is a this is a fairly intense development, and it's 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 not. Again, they've they've met the minimum requirements for the concept level, and we wanted to have the applicant have an opportunity to present to you and to hear public comment. But that doesn't mean that we don't still have concerns. And um, and that, but we we have reviewed this several times. I think I have, I think I have seven total comment you know comment memos for this particular project. Um, Many different layouts. Uh, the the at one point the the um, car wash was right next to the um, the uh, daycare facility. Uh, you know, we also look at things on site. Some of the comments I made early on, where we wanted to have bollards or some type of a guardrail between the daycare um, play yard and the and this facility. So there are so there are many many different. Um, um, components to DPW's involvement in this review. And uh, and I, that's really all I have. I'm certainly willing, um, Lee and I can both answer questions. Steve Cahoon is here as well. He can discuss the APFO, um, but certainly willing to answer questions. Do you have any comments to add, Mr. Cahoon? Sure. Um, mine is just a point of clarity. Um, the, the traffic studies um, related to APFO, look at traffic volumes and they look at uh, level of service, uh, amount of delay. They, they, they're kind of a technical look at how traffic flows. Um, they're not a measure of safety, you know. So um, the concerns, when we, when we talk about traffic concerns and intersection concerns, we have level of service capacity and can people move through the intersection. And then often there's um, things that fall in the category of safety moving through the intersection or safety in the corridor. Um, also with APFO and the traffic studies, we look, a, look at intersections and not necessarily road segments. So those are just some um, things to keep in mind. But in this, um, in this incident, they did look at the road section, correct? We looked at the road section through the development review process, and that's where the improvements to do um, dedicated left turn lanes, XL, D cell, you know, those issues came through. And, th and those were development review uh, related, um, not APFO. I just don't want APF, you know, an APFO approval to be equated to um, a, a determination on health, safety, and welfare. That's all. Any questions? So, yes, I have one. Um, so when you have the concerns about traffic, how much of that concern, if you, if you took away the bridge problem, how much would that alleviate the situation there, your concerns? And how would you rate your level of concern on 1 to 10? And just instead of just saying, well, we have concerns. What do you mean if you take away the bridge? Because that isn't going to happen. <laughs> I'll second I'm that. just asking that. <laughs> what they're, they're talking about mitigating problems with the current bridge sometime in the future. And you have, you have a company coming in here that looks to me like it's willing to spend millions of dollars to fix a roadway that's uh, probably not up to snuff right now. 
And I'm not trying to say that as a defense for or against them. I'm just making a comment. I'm just worried about how much of this is just about the bridge. And in the same regard, regarding their traffic studies, you know, how much did they not look at the bridge when they did that? You know, because it's a different, it's a different cat down there. I, I mean, I think it was Saturday after Thanksgiving. I was going to go to Ken Island for lunch to get something, get some, get some lunch, and I got um, as far as that. I think it's called the Tiger Mart, and I've had to veer off, and I went over top the circle, and ended up going back to Adams Ribs. Uh, wasn't where I wanted to go because traffic was so backed up. Well, that's a that's a trap. That's a bridge issue. Um, I'm just kept wondering about that. That's all. I would largely see this as really being independent of the bridge. I believe that the traffic analysis, where uh, I believe indicated about 75% pass by trips, is probably pretty accurate, and that this would be a, a local destination, a local generator. So whether the bridge existed or not, the the locals that that live here would be frequenting this this site be it to grab you know convenience items or or dinner or gasoline whatever that case is so i i don't know that the, the bridge really gets into that however the fact that the route 8 corridor itself is unique and that it's one way in one way out it's it's a, it's a two lane critical corridor that is known to have traffic problems and it, it only takes a, a minor disruption to slow the, the traffic you know during peak hours it can take considerable time to work the way down route 8 so what this does is the the concern i would have is if it were right in right out only it wouldn't be as disruptive as you have your left turns you have conflicting movements so anyone that is coming from south route 8 making a left turn in or in the Royal Farms making a left turn out to go northbound. It's those conflicting movements. So when we talk about you know, safety has been brought up as an issue, and again, I, I wouldn't agree that the development of the Royal Farms results in a safer condition. It, it, not in this fashion, because what it does is it introduces two new access points on Route 8. The safest, most fluid conditions are limited access. So the ideal scenario would be having an access road. So for example, multiple businesses taking access off of one point, perhaps a signalized intersection. That is something that Public Works had suggested very on in the design process, looking at coming off of Kent Manor Road there and, and, and the Bay Bridge Airport and going around with, a, with an access point there so as to minimize or eliminate direct access off Route 8 because that's where the disruption to traffic and the safety concerns with regard to uh, conflicting movements come from. Okay, I like, I like this idea of give it on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most dangerous, where are you with safety on this, issue, on this project? That, that's difficult to quantify. Uh, from a safety standpoint, I would say that I'm not quite as concerned. I wouldn't say a 10 or anything along those lines in terms of severity due to the rel relative low speed along this corridor. Uh, some of the things with What's the acceleration. The there, 40 or 50? 40. 40. 40. With the acceleration and deceleration lanes, the idea there is what you're doing is you're you are minimizing a T-bone type condition where you are bringing vehicles up to speed or off of speed off of that main line. So safety in, it considers not just the, the incidence of, of an accident, but the severity of it. And uh, where are you? One to 10. <laughs> I, would, I would say I'm just moderately concerned. Uh, it, it's, it's an additional. Four, five, two. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously. Yeah, I really I'm can't. Ask, I'm going to ask all yeah. the same question. I don't know. I can really put a number on it, but what I what I can say is that the ideal ideal scenario for Route 8 with the challenges that it has is to minimize access points. is is really what it comes down to. And what this does is it puts an additional use with two new access points and those conflicting movements. And ideally, the ideal scenario would be that the that this would 
take access off of a, off of an access road would be if we want to talk about truly we've created a a safe access that that is that's safety yeah, but i don't know if people could get to it if you did like well and that and that the back end and that and that that's a significant concern whenever there's direct access equates to much more you know you one would be less apt to go to somewhere if, if there's not direct access. That's the direct access is very important to making any kind of, um, you know, it needs to be convenient and, and it would be less convenient. But, and I offer that because there, there were the, the statements made that when this is built, it's safer. And that I, that I don't believe that can be said. Okay. Uh, so I think you're looking oh, for a so, number. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, I can't commit to a number, but I can say that when we, when staff creates comments, we have three options. We can say we recommend approval, we do not recommend approval, and in this particular case, the comment was that the applicants met the minimum requirements yeah. for concept. Mr. Cahoon. Okay, I think um, what, what we're trying to represent is, you know, the Planning Commission asked questions about this different type of circulation and layout. It seems like the safety is and the issue here. It, it, it certainly is. Um, certainly, this is a, a intense use in, in a location. It's a permitted use in this zoning district. It's a commercial zoning district. It's permitted. Um, they're taking three commercial lots, combining them into one, um, and it's in a section. Which means that you could have had three accesses. Uh, or they could have done like the daycare did and have a service road situation. Um, you know, this, the daycare didn't have its own access point. So that being said, this is the application in front of us. Um, and, um, you know, I think everybody worked hard to come up with the best situation um, to put in front of the Planning Commission, the best circulation pattern um, that we think uh, will work. Um, So the, 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 from, from day one with the original scoping letter that was sent to the applicant back in 18, um, because this section of Maryland 8 is um, the beginning of Maryland 8 and it's the only, you have to get through this section to get to, you know, the, the whole island, the whole southern island. This is a bottleneck and the safety and, and getting the traffic through here safely and effectively has been, you know, what took four years for this project to get, get in front of you. One of the things that, that I found concerning is in the morning if somebody is coming northbound and they make a left and they go get their gas and then they want to go on to work and they come out and they want to make their left and you've got everybody going northbound trying to get through that red light that's right above them. Um, and, and don't left get me wrong, turn, I mean, out. I think Royal Farms is an awesome corporation mm -hmm. and an asset to Maryland, but I'm really concerned about the safety issues. The, the left turn out in the morning, you know, is certainly the, 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 probably the movement that raised the most concern. If you're crossing a bike lane, a cell, D cell lane, a southbound lane, then the left-hand turning lane to get into the property and the northbound lane, which is coming out of 40. And trust me, very few cars do 40 going northbound once they get out of that stretch in front of the schools. So, so we've we've worked for years, like like it's been represented. Looked at several different traffic patterns. Feel this traffic pattern is the one. You know the the. Um, um, the the best to bring before the planning commission at at, at this point at will and um, as the applicant represented you know if the project moves forward we're going to continue to look at traffic continue to look at changes in background and changes in traffic volumes along that corridor um, and update traffic studies as as it um, as, as a project progresses so okay, any more questions please just madam chair um, so but prior to these meetings, the Planning Commission members are given materials ahead, over a week ahead of time to study and to look and to familiarize ourselves. So if the a memorandum, a summation memorandum was always given to us from the planning staff, which is it's always great. So I'm reading here a conclusion from, this is from the planning staff, that no agencies that have reviewed this concept plan have offered a objection to its approval. So am I hearing objection to its approval? Or I'm, I'm confused um, from 
what I dealt into here. So I guess I'm, I'm just trying to clarify, we are dependent upon, of course, the expertise and the um, experience of the planning staff um, and, and all the other components, and, and you gentlemen included. So I want to make sure that that statement still stands. We don't object to your approval. We're here to answer questions. We felt that it was important for this applicant who has been through multiple iterations, multiple submittals, to have an opportunity to present in front of you and to have uh, the public have a chance and opportunity to express their support or concerns on the project. So um, to answer your question, if we are in support of the project or not that's not the issue necessarily for us they've met the minimum standards to get to the concept level and and as a result we don't offer support and we don't deny support we just feel that they've met the requirements for concept thank you any other questions okay um, I think we have to have public comment in regards to that, before we get into public comment, Amy, it's my understanding we have like over 100 emails and we have no, yeah, we're for it in that 100? Correct. Uh, we have received close to 100 emails, maybe more. Um, probably they're still coming in. They were coming uh, into staff and the public comment site this morning and while the meeting was beginning. I have not seen any comments in support. Um, I think the comments can be generally summarized as uh, having concerns that have been expressed uh, by staff relative to um, safety, relative to the location of the site and the proximity to other uses where there are perceived conflicts with the daycare center and um, some other um, in egress and uh, ingress concerns uh, from this site and from those intersections at other sites. Um, the comments that we've received have all been collected in both an electronic file and um, a physical paper file that are available for review um, by the public and by uh, the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission doesn't have the ability to receive messages in real time. So I think it's fair to say that um, we can ask um, staff to summarize a collective um, number of comments that have received. Can, you, can we do that? Can you give us a number in the public comment? Um, How many mm -hmm. that we received? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we can give you the number of comments and then ask for anyone who, I know there are several um, citizens online who wish to make comment and citizens who have um, come to the meeting today to make those comments. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, for public comment, Dennis Leahy. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I am uh, not a planner. Give us I, your, could you give us your name, please? Oh, I'm sorry. And your address. I'm sorry. My name is Dennis Leahy. My address is 174 Topside Drive. That's in Stevensville? That's correct. Yes, it's in the Bay Bridge Cove community. Okay. Um, I am not a planner, and I have no studies to present to you. But after hearing what the comments are from individuals about safety and driving and walking and biking on this particular roadway, I think all of you, and, I, and I'm glad to see this, are very familiar with this situation. It's dangerous already. Route 8 is the lifeblood for travel for our southern community. It's the only artery in and out. We know the volume of traffic is strong. It's pretty quick and speedy, and turning is very difficult already. My concern is, there's many concerns. First concern is, is, is it a benefit to our community to have this structure built? Currently, there are five gas stations within a half mile that serve gas, food, and groceries. 
That meets the need of our current community. I strongly feel, after talking to many people, we don't have a need for this. Now, where does the need come from? I have no idea. You know, Royal Farms is a multi-million dollar corporation. And they make a lot of money, and they do a very good job in planning and promotion. And when they promote, everybody takes notice. Now, coming over the bridge to the eastern shore, especially in the summer, there's backups, there's many issues that develop, and once you're branded and people know that Royal Farms exist in this area, and that's the first exit off of the Bay Bridge, I don't have a study on this, but I can guarantee you there's a large segment of that population who will exit and venture into this area. Now once that's done and once it's developed and people start planning, and I know about planning, I'm 72 years old, I need bathroom stops. I have grandchildren. You need to know where you're gonna stop. And with Royal Farms, people will turn off and come to that area. And my concern is that there was a couple questions or a couple answers presented saying it will be for local traffic only. I disagree completely. Um, there's a movie called The Field of Dreams, and in that they say, if we build it, they will come, and that's what's going to happen. You're going to build it, and they will come, and they will come in the hundreds, and during the summer, when we have backups, and they can't wait to get off of that bridge, you're going to have thousands of people trying to get to the Royal Farms. Time's up. Well, I have one more thing. May I? Um, in, in 10 seconds or in 10 not. seconds. All those people who come there who are going to the beach all have to leave and they all have to make a left-hand turn to go northbound. Every single car. Thank you. You're welcome. Next, Helen Bennett. I didn't realize there was a time limit. I, oh, now now sorry, that I know minutes. that, I, I will certainly change limit. it. Thank you. Good morning, Helen Bennett, I live on Kent Island. I had a lot written down, but after listening to the developers, um, I changed a little bit of what I was gonna say. You know, two farms, I agree, I, I mean, um, a lot of people like Royal Farms, I do too, but they are, I would argue they're not really local. Uh, most people in, on Kent Island, um, you're not local if you've been, after been here 30 or 40 years. You have to have a couple uh, generations to be local. Um, they have a 500 million revenue annually. And so even though they've, they've put in a lot of time and effort, we're not gonna be breaking them if we don't agree with this um, proposal they're done. And the fact that there's been seven proposals already kind of lets you see they're trying to put a square peg in a round hole. Maybe you just need to not put it there. Um, I find it ironic that during the tornadoes that we had, that huge tornado that went in Stevensville, the entire community got together and planted trees and shrubs to put it back the way that it was. Farmer John's was destroyed, and the community to go fund means and put more than $50,000 of their hard-earned money to support Farmer John's, who then turned around about a year later, sold it, and now this is what we're gonna put in. I find that really very ironic, that the community wants Farmer John's. We don't want a Royal Farms, as nice as that is. Um, when they talk about C, you know, I've had a lot of, of experience with traffic studies. And the citizens that you're supposed to be taking care of, and, you're, and I think you guys had some great questions, we deserve better than adequate. We deserve better than a C. We deserve better than the minimum requirements that they say that they're meeting with this project. We deserve the best. Um, and when you talk about urban commercial that it fits into that, a variety of commercial, we have 13 gas stations on Kent Island. It's not even five miles long. You could run out of gas and coast to a gas station. We have 13 underground tanks. You're talking about your water runoff. There is nothing beneficial. Dennis, this was a great point Dennis made. There is nothing 
beneficial to our community with this project and I really encourage you think about your citizens what's best for the citizens not for the developers and vote no for this project thank you for your time thank you Sergey Nicolier I hope I didn't That's slaughter Sergey. that name yeah. how do you pronounce Sergey. it Sergey yeah. Um, how are you? I'm Sergey uh, Nikolaev. I'm one of the owners of Canal and Depot. I live in Bethesda, Maryland, but um, we own the Canal and Depot gas station, which will, of course, uh, be the most affected party, I would think, out of this, economically at least. Um, I just would like to say that uh, I don't want to repeat my, uh, the other people. I don't want to repeat the other people that uh, it's going to be bad for the community and, you know, this large corporation is going to ruin not maybe ruined, but definitely it'll be a tough, we'll be in a tough economic situation, um, our business as well as other local businesses south of Royal Farms. They don't have the gourmet food. They don't have the gourmet food, but there's a pizza place. You know, Royal Farms will have that. So um, the it's fine, it's fair competition. It happens, I get that. That's completely fine. Um, the thing is, I want to make sure that this competition stays fair. and. With the proposed concept plan, traffic plan, what's going to happen, I, I see two issues to our site. The first issue, is there is no left turn lane going north. So if you're going north on Roman Coke Road, you can, they're making a left lane to turn to them. Yes, that's great. Um, but they're not making a left turn lane going to us. Why is that? We are going to be the competitor for them. The second problem is they're making this, and thank you very much, Royal Farms, you guys are making this, um, I guess, turning in from Roman Cove, going inside the, the shoulder lane, which is great. It's definitely a good thing. However, what's going to happen is if uh, a customer is going inside Royal Farms and can't decide are they going to go right to the pumps or left to the store, they're going to pause for a second or a few seconds or 30 seconds, I don't know, and the cars are going to get backed up. Five, six cars are going to get backed up. They're going to block our only entrance. That's what's going to happen. And many people talked about convenience. If there's no direct access, people are not going to go inside. I completely agree with Tom and with other people who spoke about this dual entrance exit thing. It's very confusing. It's very dangerous. Um, it's good for Royal Farms. Yeah, they talked about the on-site traffic is going to be perfect for deliveries, for other things. Yes. But for off-site traffic, especially to the adjacent neighbors, it's going to be terrible. They're going to block us completely. I mean, like, and that's our only entrance. How, how is that fair? That's, that's not fair competition. Um, I was going to show a video, but I think there is a time limit. But um, it, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, yeah. Could you please play the video real quick? Um, so this is a video from one of our cameras. Uh, go, you know, looking on Roman Coke Road on Route Eight. It shows. <clears throat> it shows that um, this was taken, I think, in November, about a month ago, uh, maybe two weeks ago. And it shows a car, uh, it's going to show a car in a few seconds, I guess, a long video, but it's going to show a car trying to turn left. And um, this car uh, is not able to turn left because there's so much traffic. You can also see across the street, uh, you can, you'll be able to see the same thing happening. And I'm sorry, I should have cut the video because I didn't know there's a time frame. But the car gave up eventually oh. after two. Oh, that was that one. Oh, I'm sorry. That was, <laughs> I'm sorry. <Nick. laughs> I submitted the wrong video. Sorry about that. Well, this is actually good too. This no, was talking about, this is a great video. This is talking about safety. I'm sorry, yeah, this is the police department asked me to submit it to them. So this Amazon driver wanted to make a U-turn and uh, created this terrible accident. Um, it just, it's a, it's, a, it's a very dangerous situation as it is now. But um, I, I was not gonna show this video. This was a mistake, but it worked. <laughs> uh, the, the other video I wanted to show that was that uh, the, the truck, uh, as it was a black truck trying to turn left, and after two minutes, it just gave up because it couldn't. There was so much traffic during rush hour. So it eventually turned right. And we had a backup of three cars behind it that turned. It took three minutes, pretty much, to exit the site. So all these conditions, um, they're making good things entering the site, but exiting the site, they're not talking about them at all. Plus, all the traffic studies that were done, they're not in the summer. This, this happened in November, but in May, June, July, August, the, you know, our sales are almost double of the winter. It means we have double of the customers, almost double of the customers. It's much worse. So I, I urge that you guys please do a traffic study in the summer when it's really needed. 
and uh, we see all the issues and I'm happy to provide more videos I just don't have the videos of the summer because you know they're not stored for that long but I'm happy to cooperate and provide the videos and everything yeah. <laughs> time okay time mm -hmm. so thank you Sergey mm -hmm. um, Sergey Ivo Al Alviano No? Okay. Uh, Suzanne Smith. Smythe. I'm Suzanne Smythe, and I live in BBC, BBC. It's the 55 and above community, straight across from where this is going to be um, maybe built. I didn't know there was a three-minute time frame, because then I would have totally have done my notes different so a lot of the stuff that I was going to cover has been covered so it'd be just repeating uh, that but I sit right there on the corner at the entrance of Kent Manor uh, I'm the one unit sitting right by the pond so I'm looking right at BP the airport right next to us um, McKee has been granted that that land use is going to be turned to commercial use too, and it was approved. So that's going to be added access right there in that same very dangerous area. Living there, I don't dare, I would not cross the street on a bike. And I grew up in Denmark. I think I rode my bike before I walked. So I am very uh, good on a bike, but doing that, going over that way where they say they are going to put that bike lane, I would not use it because I would be afraid. Um, right now, there's so much noise in that area. I have some videos that I took at 3 o'clock in this morning, and you can hear the highway, you can hear cars coming by. Um, to start with, too, um, drainage in BBC is awful. Many houses have their call space flooded. So if you're going to put this big... Uh, development right across from us and you put a big piece of uh, concrete or whatever asphalt we all know what that does to that just creates where's all that water gonna go uh, and two if there is say an accident with one of their pumps and all of that leaks in the ground that's another and two right now where I live I can hear the traffic inside my house we add this I'm going to really be hearing lots of traffic all the time. Um, there's a comment on Facebook from another resident that lives right next to a, a royal farm in Queenstown, and this was his comment. And he said, I wouldn't wish any of these issues on anybody. He says he has noise, people yelling, diesel fuel, idling trucks all night, trash, people urinating outside. Grass cutting starting at 6.30 in the morning, bank dumpsters. And he said he has to try to address all these issues to no avail. Uh, and I live kitty corner from that on the map where there is four triplexes right across from where BP is going to be built. They already are having nightmare issues because they can hear all the traffic. They're even, okay. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. Joshua Willis. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Joshua Willis. I'm a local business owner, musician, president of historic Kent Island, and a lifelong resident, and I live down Route 8 in Mattapeka States. I'm against the Royal Farms proposal. Regardless of the UC zoning, it is simply not needed, nor is it safe, as I think you've established here today. Residents have no need for another convenience store or gas station. The airport depot BP, the shortstop Valero, they're right next door and within 1,000 feet of each other. Plus, Ken Island, as already mentioned, already has 13 convenience store gas stations. Now, I do believe the property rights matter, but they don't matter more than the thousands of people that live around that area. The First Amendment gives us the right to freedom of speech, but only until we abuse it and negatively affect someone's quality of life. This Royal Farms will negatively affect the quality of life of all Route 8 residents, including myself. 
I was going to mention the quote from the Queenstown row of farms that was previously mentioned. One thing that wasn't mentioned about that is that this occurs in a far less populated area than Ken Island, 10 miles from the Bay Bridge and also on Route 301, not the combined 5301. Royal Farms is a popular brand that's been established and this site will draw all of Ken Island, not just Route 8, causing more traffic. Baybridge Cove and Ellendale neighborhoods are still under construction and not fully occupied. So to take a traffic study into account, I don't think that can fully be established until those are all completed with the additional traffic on the road. There are already 11 points of commercial ingress and egress within 1,800 feet of the proposed site, contributing to the most accidents on Route 8 and creating a scary death trap as already mentioned because it's a funnel and there's only one way in and one way out. This occurred when the uh, race across America shut down the road in the American Legion for 15 minutes and the backups reached almost all the way to Route 50. And that was in the afternoon, right? That's, yes, early afternoon during, into evening. That's um, correct. Yes. Um, the surrounding environment is also negatively affected. If you consider the fact that one inch of rain on one acre of wetland causes 750 gallons of runoff, once paved, that becomes 27,000 gallons of runoff. This will include fuel and oil. If approved, you also might destroy another piece of Ken Island history or at least, at least diminish it. The adjacent Broad Creek Cemetery is our oldest churchyard and cemetery dating to 1652 and the entire area was the town of Broad Creek. We've already lost enough of that property due to all the developments around and I really, really would hope that we don't lose another opportunity given that site to possibly search for something that might lead us into our history of one of the earliest settlements in America. So I'll leave you with this. After receiving 100 plus emails, and I believe there's 35 or so more on Zoom waiting to speak, please take these comments into consideration because if not, then I feel like most people would ask themselves, what is the point of these planning commissions and these public meetings? Many have used the comp plan as a shield of excuses that rules decisions, but why is that if, why would you even invite the public into this if that's how it's gonna be? You may not know this, and uh, I'm not blaming this on you or any of the other commissioners, but you are losing the faith of the public. That can easily be seen in all the comments on the post from Historic Ken Island and myself. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it, and hope you make the great decision. Thank you, Joshua. Okay, for the public comment on Zoom, I'm going to ask people if, if you have the same comments, Please just give us your name and say I have the same so that we can move this along. Um, can we start? Yeah. Who's first? Uh, Carrie Ann. All right. All right, so yeah, so we're going to start. Oh, Carrie, is that you? Yeah, that's oh, me. Yep, you've got three minutes. Go for it. Great, thank you. My name is Carrie Ann Slakum. I live uh, in Bay City, on Bay City Road, actually. Um, I have been a resident of Kent Island for a little over 10 years now, and um, I'm not even grasping the concept of why this is even up for discussion. Um, why there's a need for a third gas station to be in the stone's throw of two other established gas stations that are in opposite directions that anyone can access regardless which direction they're going in. Um, my daughter used to attend the daycare center that is literally right there in that little strip center. Um, and I can assure you, if she was still in attendance, I would yank her immediately if this was approved due to huge safety concerns that I have. I have been in that playground area that will essentially butt up to the back end of the Royal Farms, which is a huge safety concern for all the parents of these children. Um, the, the Royal Farms group has sat there and stated that there is, um, you know, a convenience of coffee and groceries. My question that everyone should be asking on this panel is what does Royal Farms offer above and beyond what Shorestop and BP already offer? There's nothing. There's absolutely nothing that they offer above and beyond the two already established gas stations on this road within a stone's throw of one another. Um, five months out of the year, we already have complete gridlock on Route 50, just for the sheer volume of going to and from Ocean City. This would expand the gridlock to a more smaller and restrictive side roads. Um, there's absolutely no reason this project other than lining the pockets of the business owner, which you know, I commend they're doing their job trying to, you know, expand their business, but this is not the location for this expansion in any way, shape, or form. Clearly, safety is not a factor when it comes to their proposal. 
even though they've mentioned a multitude of times that it would be safe, it's not. They don't live in this community. No one that has, that has put this proposal forward has even sat there and solicited the thoughts and opinions of the actual residents that live on this portion of Route 8. No one. I've heard of no uh, town hall meetings, no open discussions, nothing. And I'm very actively involved in this community. This planning commission needs to use common sense and logic when considering this project. It is neither logical nor does it fit into the realm of any ounce of common sense for the small island. I appreciate each and every one of you and what you do and represent with this with this community. And I really hope that you listen to us residents when we are respectfully wishing that this does not. Okay, time's up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, once more, I'm going to reiterate that if it's a safety issue, I think we've heard everything. If you um, have something that we haven't heard, we would appreciate the comments. But please, let's not just rehash and hash and rehash. Go ahead. Okay, so up next, uh, Susan. Susan Buckingham, if you could uh, unmute yourself, and you've got three minutes. Thank you. Um, I'm Susan Buckingham. I live in Queens Landing on the north side of Kent Island. And um, I appreciate all of the information and cautions about traffic and safety. Um, I was struck that they said they had not yet consulted with emergency services. And I think that's a a very large concern about uh, emergency vehicles not able to get through. And also I worked um, with other people on giving input for the comprehensive plan. And I think environmentally, I have not heard anything about mitigating impact on impervi impervious surface ratios and um, I know they did a study on stormwater runoff, but I'm not sure that that is completely clear. Um, so I would vote no on this for sure, um, given all the other concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Next. All right, the next, I believe it's the, we were trying to get their name, but I think um, your iPhone, I can see you. Uh, I think we're asking you to unmute right now. Hi, my name is Corey Kaczmarek. I'm a local resident. Um, I live in Bay City. Um, I'm gonna keep mine short because um, I am home with children, but I agree with everything everybody has said already. Um, not only am I concerned about safety, but I'm also concerned about local wildlife, um, all the different impacts it's gonna have environmentally, um, and along with you know all the safety concerns that have been mentioned. Okay, thank you. Next. Thank you. Okay. Okay, and next we have Blaine. Blaine, could you unmute yourself? I think we're asking you to do it now. And you've got three minutes. Yeah, I just want to say thank you for letting me speak first off. Um, I heard a whole lot of people- Excuse me, I'm sorry, where, 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 excuse me, where did you say you live? Bay City. Where? You heard from my wife Bay City. Oh, Bay City, City. okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Sorry, the one, one thing I want to say is keep, people keep bringing up safety concerns. I haven't heard the impact that's going to be on crime. You bring people, you bring crime. Police are already spread thin as it is. We're in a pretty big county. I don't understand why we even want to put our all farms within the gas stations as it is. The other concern I have is the fact that you did not talk to him after a fire. We all know Eastern Shore has home response. If you backlog traffic, the home response people will not be able to get to the station and get the pieces out to help people that are in need. It's a big concern for me. I'm a former firefighter and EMS responder, so I know what it's like. And it's very concerning. The Route 8's already pretty locked as it is with one more accident, we're shut down for a minute, a half hour, 45 minutes to an hour, depending on where you live. It's a big concern. Quite honestly, I have heard one positive thing from any residents in the town just about this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Next. All right, and the last that we have, um, Jenna. Jenna, we're asking you to unmute. Jenna, go ahead. You've got three. Uh, yeah, go ahead and unmute yourself. There you are. Okay, you've got. 
Jenna Lentz, I live in Bay City on Bay City Road. Um, so I agree with everything that everyone has said so far and just a few things to add. Um, just last night, um, I was in Bay, I believe it's Bay Bridge Cove next to Allendale, the new community, and I was at a funeral reception. Uh, the gentleman who was buried happens to be in the um, cemetery that's going to be right behind the proposed new Royal Farm. Um, that's very upsetting um, that the people there are going to have to look at that, but that is your decision. When I was leaving that funeral reception, I was attempting to make a left out of the Bay Ridge Cove um, neighborhood to go to Bay City to my house. I couldn't do it. I sat there for a long time. And what I finally did was I turned right, I went to the light that's like by the target, I made a U-turn and came back down to my house. My biggest concern, I live on Bay City Road right near the light. Um, the traffic there is already immense. Um, it's very hard for me sometimes to get in and out of my driveway. Uh, when I speak to my fellow residents that live like near Irene, they don't turn left out of Irene. They're, it's too difficult to make the left out of Irene. A ton of residents that all my neighbors have told me that and that's why they come past my house at the light instead. So if someone is sitting at Royal Farms and can't make that left, what are they going to do? They're gonna do the same thing that I did last night. They're going to make a right. They're gonna turn into Irene Way. They're gonna go across Victoria on the Bay City Road so they can make that left. Or they're gonna to go to the light and turn into Mattapique School District and make a U-turn and come back down Route And if you don't believe that's not true, it is. Ask the gentleman who was showing the video and said he has tons of videos. I'm telling you, I live there, I watch it, I could send you videos from my house. It happens, I just did it last night. I couldn't make that left. So unless there's a light proposed with the Royal Farms, I don't think you understand what an impact that is going to make to Bay City resident communities. Uh, our residents, I apologize, because I live there and I'm telling you that's what's gonna happen. People cannot make a left out of there. Um, there's also going to be accidents. Um, my sister herself was in a very severe accident at that light, even with the light. Um, I was in my backyard playing with my young children and heard an immense crash and called 911 and reported the accident. There's already a lot of accidents, even with the light at Bay City. I would like you to come sit at my house, honestly, and watch. I, I don't um, I don't want to, I'm just saying it's sort of sin, at least add that. But if you come sit at my house and watch how many res how many people come up through eight, I'm sorry, come through Route 8, through Bay City. If there's an accident, people turn around in Bay City all the time. And so as a Bay City resident, and no one has said this yet, I am extremely concerned about getting in and out of my own driveway at this um, I believe everything else that I was gonna say has been said. Um, and the gentleman who um, is on the commissioners who asked if this has to do with Bay Bridge traffic, I can tell you absolutely not. At six, seven o'clock last night when I was trying to make that left hand turn on the Bay City, um, on the route to get to Bay City, there was no Bay Bridge traffic. It's just us, we live down there. Obviously you don't, okay, you don't time. understand. We're just trying to get home from work. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, that was passionate. Um, okay, next. Okay, so just one, one last, people who are out there in Zoom land, if you have, to, would you like to make a comment, please turn your camera on and let us know. Um, that would be nice of you. If not, I think we're done with Zoom. Okay. Yep. There you go. Um, okay, so, and then we do have, I think it's about 10 voicemails that came through. Uh, the longest one's about a minute and 25 seconds if you wanted to hear those. I think we ought to hear him. Go ahead. Got you. All right, Marshall, cue it up. Hello, my name is Gregory Fornaro. I live on Rock Lane in Stevensville. That's in Kent Point now. Uh, this call is for uh, comments for the Planning Commission meeting of December 8, 2022. I would like to express my complete and total opposition to the Royal Farm Store Concept Plan, SP19-12-0047. There is absolutely no need whatsoever for another third gas station in that vicinity and also another car wash. There's already one car wash at the BP. Uh, it is underutilized. That gas station is underutilized. The um, uh, Delero does fine business with gas, something. but I never once had a problem getting gasoline. We do not need another Royal Farm store. We certainly don't need a high traffic uh, uh, store like that one opening in that area. What with the 
new uh, uh, retirement community that's just opened up and all the other housing there, that congestion right around Route 8 and Route 50 is outrageous already. There is simply no need for this, and I'm diametrically opposed to it. Thank you. Hey, Nick. Was that the longest one, I hope? I believe so, yeah. It's like one Hello, my name is Catherine Rogers. This is for meeting Royal Farms concept plan SP number 19-12-0047 proposal on December 8th. I would lead, like to leave a message uh, indicating my opposition to this building being made uh you cut that one due to we got the, the opposition we understand gotcha marshall next this message is for the planning commission my name is tara mitchell i live in bay city in stevensville maryland i don't appreciate another convenience or gas station being put on ken island we have several and to put it next to in opposition again. Let's next one. Next, Marshall. My name is Linda Henley, H E N L E Y. I'm at 410 591 1551. I'm calling to um, go on record that I am against the Royal Farms contract plan SP number 19 12. Hi, um, my name is Brent Lewis. I'm a Queen Anne's County resident. I'm not sure uh, which, uh, who this should be for the zoning or the county commissioner. So I'm calling in reference uh, to being against the Royal Farms concept plan SP. Thanks. Next one. Next one. Hi, my name is Kenton Kilgore. I live in Bay City and I was calling to voice my opposition to the Royal Farms Next. that's proposed to... This message is for the Planning Commission. My name is Dennis Salehi and this is in regard to SP number 19 Mr. Leahy's already spoken. Next. <clears throat> My name is Jennifer Branzell. This is for the county commissioners regarding the Royal Farms concept plan SP number 19-12-00477. I am calling to urge you to please vote against this horrific. Thanks. Hi, this is Barry Schwartz calling. I live in Stevensville in Baybridge Cove, and I'm calling specifically about the um, Royal Farms Project number, SP number 19-12-0047. We're concerned about the amount of traffic, the amount of noise, the amount of light pollution, and the fact that there are two gas stations within Next. a quarter. Hi, this is Merle Schwartz, and I am calling. Uh, this message is for the county commissioners. I believe it uh, might also be for the planning board. I'm calling in regards to the Royal Farms concept plan, um, and, and I want to voice my concern. I don't want to see it going on. on Next. The show, but it will on. be the last. Yep, should be the last one. Okay. My name is Jeremy Kilgore, and I want to leave a message about the ruling for the Royal Bars that is coming. <coughs> I live in Bay City, and I just want to make record of the comment that I don't think we need a Royal Farm. Next. The traffic. That's all. 
Okay, so that's all of our voicemails. And then as for the emails, um, at a count, it's like a rough count, but it's about um, 89 that I have. Um, about six of them were a form letter, which were people just signed onto, almost like a petition. The only one that kind of stood out, other than what you were saying about how uh, the comments have already been made today, all these emails have basically speaking to a variation of it in like different lengths. I think the only one that stands out a little bit different that I saw was this one. So I'd like to read this one. It's pretty short. Okay. Um, this one is from Jody Schultz, president of the Canal and Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, he said, we have requested to meet with the developer slash owner of the project per QAC ordinance um, 08-07 attached. We are optimistic that Royal Farms will be receptive to meet, but as this email, we have not heard back. I ask that the Planning Commission please consider this and the extreme importance of CO 08-07 to our volunteer fire department, and then if the Royal Farms Administrative Subdivision slash concept plan is approved, that a condition of approval is that they are required to adhere to CO 08-07. Thank you for your consideration. But that's about Thank it. You. One more. One more. One more on Zoom. Oh, it looks like we have someone that popped up on Zoom real quick. Okay. Take All right. Go ahead, go ahead, iPhone, we're asking you to unmute yourself and you have three minutes and please introduce yourself. Hi there, I had to jump on a different meeting, but I just wanted to make sure my children attend the daycare um, right next door to this proposed plan. I just want to speak, I guess, to the safety associated, um, having strangers right next to a playground um, I just want to make sure that that is known and addressed and people have thought about that. Along with the constant cars that are cur currently turning in and out of that parking lot is already danger and dangerous in and of itself. And just the idea of now then people turning left into the rural farms and then opposition traffic turning right in there um, is going to be dangerous and a nightmare along with um, buses at that school does all after school care, so buses do stop there and children do cross the road. Um, I just want to make sure that that's addressed. Um, along with, I guess, just the environmental concern, I am in insurance. Um, I have a bachelor's in insurance, so just the idea of any sort of toxins associated with then running off into a child's playground, I just think that that should also be taken into consideration. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. So do we have any comment or questions from the commissioners? I have one. Yes, sir. Was a light ever considered for left turns? I don't believe it's a beam bars for a traffic signal, and it doesn't come anywhere close. Right I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. Kyle Schmid, traffic concepts. So in order to put in a traffic signal, you meet, need to meet traffic signal warrant analysis. And there's, I believe, 10 or 11 conditions. And most of them are volume related. Some are um, high accident location. Different variables go into meeting uh, for a traffic signal warrant. You and don't want to block away? Because that's I mean, about how far it is from the Yeah, no, and the there's, right, there's, uh, there's, I mean, there's recommended offsets between traffic signal as far as distance goes. Um, that usually engineering judgment comes into play a lot of times with that because obviously if you're in a downtown city atmosphere or a rural atmosphere, it impacts the distance that traffic signals are spaced. Um, but in this condition, the, the traffic exiting rural farms and going in, it wouldn't come nowhere close to meeting volume warrants to input a traffic signal here. So it would, wouldn't be able to be installed. Okay. And I would like to make one point of clarification on the emergency services. The plan was reviewed at each stage. Each, con each rendition of the plans was sent to the, emer sent to the emergency services department of the county and was reviewed by them and was also sent to the fire departments. The issue in regards to the Mr. Schulte's email and my conversation with him all goes to do with, with, a, um, with a, a private developer agreeing during the development review process to provide ongoing funding for the volunteer fire department. It has nothing to do with with a, a review of the safety of the layout or anything of that nature it just purely has to do with us getting together and saying yeah Royal Farms gonna provide so much funding to the fire department either as one-time contribution or as an annual contribution that's that's all that that went to 
It's um, important to the fire department. It is. It is very important, but it's not something that had to be done before we came in for exactly. this concept. But that was the point I was trying to make. Yeah. So, Madam Chair, so <clears throat> forgive me if this is buried in our information. <clears throat> Do you have, like, on an average daily basis, how many vehicles you think will be visiting the site? Mr. <clears throat> I'm Jeff. Okay. You can step aside. You know how many you would like to have, but how many yeah. do you <laughs> typically have? Uh, each store is different. Um, we might have 2,000 customers a day, but that could be different transactions, the same car coming in. Um, so I, I, I don't have a number as to how many actually come in per day. This is certainly, I think, going to be much less busy than we have on 301 or anything on 50 we have. This, I've heard comments before and I respect people. This is much people. smaller, right? Yeah, well, it's, it's a slower road. It's, it's not on Route 50. No, yeah, but I mean, how many pumps do you have in Queenstown? We have Queenstown? six dispensers. I don't know what we have, but probably Queenstown and, and um, Graysonville have more dispensers. I know Graysonville does for right. sure. Okay. The, the only other thing that I'd, I'd like to offer the, the Planning Commission is, is that the, the, the comments in regards to the access from, from the county today after looking at the staff report, you know, lead us to at least some internal discussion or is there something further we might be able to work on, maybe one access point, but they will need ingress and egress. But would something like that help alleviate some of the county's concerns um, that we heard today? Uh, and we're certainly willing to go back, you know, maybe take a little bit of a break and talk to them about that and, and maybe even look at a little bit from an architectural standpoint. So, you know, we're not in an all or nothing situation. That's why we came in for concept plan as opposed to moving right to site plan and saying take it or leave it. Um, so, so we are open to that kind of suggestion. Um, if the Planning Commission was so inclined, I mean, we, you know, that, that's something we'd step back a little bit and then come back in and have a, another yeah. dialogue. Can I just add something? Absolutely. Yeah, to, to Joe's point, and if we were to go down to one access point, we just can't say that right now. We have to design the site. We have to figure out if that can even work, how it would work, where they would go on the road, how our layout would work. So sure. as much as we'd love to be able to say, yeah, for sure, we can do this, we'd like to work. As I said early on when I, when I first spoke, we have a history of trying to work with communities and boards to try to come up with a win-win. We're willing to look at this again. I just cannot say it today that we can do this architectural, we can do this access point here. We have to do truck turning templates and other engineering. We have to make sure it works. So, but thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amy, okay, just to, um, I think that a concern that has been reflected over and over is certainly relative to safety and access to the property. So uh, through deliberation, uh, staff has put forward five conditions for your consideration. And I think that in contemplation of what we've heard today and what we've received in writing, I think a fifth condition that you might want to consider asking of the team is to request that the consultant uh, in the traffic study look at the number of uh, left-hand turns into and um, out of the site during morning and evening rush hours. I think that's really what we're, um, what we're getting at uh, with these concerns, is that during rush hours, um, in the evening when it's dark, in the morning, uh, how are those left-hand turns impacting the adjacent roadway? So I think us requesting that study might answer, uh, answer some of those concerns. We can tell you those can numbers you now. Just word that again. Just re require Royal Farms to, to do a study on left-hand turns during rush hour? Mm, left-hand turns to? into and out of the site during morning and evening rush hours. We have the numbers that are based on the ITE trip generation manual that, you know, Mark can tell you right now if you want to know what they are. I mean, we can do further evaluation because if we do take a step back and look at this other aspect with it, Jeff and I would, had spoke to, we can certainly give you more of a condensed version of it. But if you want to hear the numbers right now, Mark can give them to you because they were in every APF study we've done so far. And moving forward, because we're asking for additional study, I think that an update and making sure that we have those numbers, but um, those numbers under any scenario that um, the further design would result in, I think we'd like to see that. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, can I get a resolution or a motion? Madam Chair, 
Uh, may I? Uh, resolved that the Planning Commission regarding a request by Two Farms Inc. for concept plan approval for 5,154 square foot convenience store, six gasoline fuel islands, 12 fueling positions, and a 1,248 square foot car wash, and is more particularly described in Partland Planning and Zoning file SP 19 12 0047. And based on the overwhelming uh, public support and concerns about traffic safety and welfare, uh, deny the concept plan approval for the file uh, for the said applicant. I have a second. Okay, then that, that's dead on, on arrival, right? Let's go for Can I get another motion? Madam Chair, I'm, I'm not going to do a resolution. I'm gonna, I want to ask a question. I, <clears throat> I think I probably already indicated that the verbal testimony of our own Department of Public Works um, has given me pause. It was information, I mean, besides the public comments presented here, was information that was not in the packet that I had gone over. Um, it make, concerns me that their verbal testimony is eh. I don't think so. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, so I'm not putting words in their mouth. But that does give me pause as far as the safety issues. We, we, everybody sitting here travels up and down Route 8. I don't live there. I live in Queen Anne's County, but I am there for, for, very, for other reasons. Um, is there um, a possibility that concerns brought up here have them go back and come back before us? I have not seen that done here since I've been on the commission, um, so I respectfully ask that question. Yeah, we could do that. Go back on. Yeah, you can table and list the things that they should consider and back. bring back in a different iteration. Or okay. And we, I think we indicated that we're agreeable to going back and looking at that access point, providing the additional information about left-hand turns, and we'll look at architecture as well because that was a, that was brought up here today. So we're agreeable to that as a tabling. And if you want to make that into some formal motion, you know, that's certainly certainly something we can do. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know me, right? I'm, but I'm struggling with this one a little bit. To uh, be perfectly honest with you, this was a tough one. Um, I think you need to do better. Uh, you got to come up with something. I, I've even thought about, you, know, you go up to New Jersey and they have J turns. Um, you know, where you, you don't make a left turn, you make a right turn. You don't have any room for J turns well, on Route 8. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't live there, Sharon. I'm, you know, well, I'm, just, I'm room, just saying. Bill. Huh? It's a two-lane road. I understand that, but but one of the issues they had with regards to a life was the proximity to the existing light. You can make them turn right. You go down there. You might have to buy a little piece of property, spend a little more money. I know it's not a little bit though. Put up a light and allow them to make a safe left turn. But otherwise, I don't know how you're going to overcome this issue with me. I. Uh, I think that the residents have done a pretty good job of speaking up. I believe that property owners have real rights, uh, but at the same time, you know, there's there are other consider, uh, considerations. Is it is it better for the neighborhood? Does it make it safer? Does it make property more valuable, less valuable? All those things are coming into play, and it's a tough, tough spot there. Uh, friends live down that road. Uh, so I've been up and down Route 8. Uh, I live well. F I live as far away from Route 8, Route 8 as you can possibly get, probably get. But um, you know, when they're telling me this is a horrible idea, uh, you know, I I like my friends. You know, what can I say? Um, you know, I'm not willing to say no, but I am willing to look you in the eye and say you go ahead at your own risk. Is that fair? Yeah. I'm done. Okay, Madam Chair, I'm going to make a motion that the um, request for concept plan approval by Two Farms Inc. for a 5,154 square foot convenience store, six gasoline fuel islands with 12 fueling positions, and a 12,048 square foot car wash, um, more particularly described in Department of Planning and Zoning file SP 19 12 0047 be tabled until such time as the applicants can address the issues raised here um, before us with regard to traffic safety, ingress and egress issues, and architectural issues. Can I get a second? Second. Uh, any comments? 
All right, let's go for the question. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Nay. All right, thank you, commissioners. Thank you for the time. Welcome. Okay. Any other business? Public comments? Uh, I have a comment. Come on. You have to come up. Oh, yes. Um, introduce so. yourself again and where you live. Sure, of course. My name is Dennis Leahy. I live at 174 Topside Drive. Um, when you have, since it's tabled, will the public be able to comment? Yeah, sure. All over again. We're going to do it kind of like we are today, but we'll Same. allow more time. Good thing, right? Three, three, yeah. three minutes. Three minutes. Or three, oh, I, I, will, I will condense. <laughs> Thank you. And you can also submit written comments up until the next review. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. At any length. Pardon me? You, written can be, you, you could submit the Encyclopedia Britannica if you like. <laughs> I'll let my wife do that. Well, actually, the earlier the better so that we, we all have time to review yeah. them prior to okay. the meeting. Yeah, okay. Thank you all. So we get our packets about two weeks ahead of time, so. Okay. And now, how will the notice be given? How, how do we know when there, there, there will be? It just a, comes up on the agenda. Okay. You post the agenda when? So we, we check the agenda. Monthly? Okay. Will there be any other signs put out? Usually there's a sign put out that there's going to be a meeting. Will there be new signs put out? Yeah. So, yeah, we uh, issue the agenda. Is it one week ahead, two weeks ahead of the, uh, the meeting? Uh, properties are posted. In addition, as I mentioned at our last meeting, we are now, uh, with the help of um, this team and the... Um, uh, Beth Malaski, the uh, public relations specialist, we are getting out social media blasts, which was very helpful in this case. And we are also on the agendas. Um, generally, it will be on the either the Friday or the Monday before our Thursday standing meeting. All of the materials uh, that are on the agenda will be accessible. And we were able to get that all up and running for this meeting. Um, so now... Uh, keep an eye out for the agendas two weeks ahead, and we're the second Thursday of every month. So keep an eye out for the agenda, and also uh, pay attention to social media. Uh, that was effective this time, and we're also very happy that you'll be able to access all of the project materials. Um, Chairman Dobson mentions a really good point. And I want to um, acknowledge and thank the citizens for conducting such a well-organized um, effort to participate in this process. We received 89 very well-written, very well-thought-out responses. Uh, they were all, almost all of them unique. Even though there was repetition in the concerns that were echoed, they were very well presented. And we really appreciate that. It is more helpful to us if we can get those comments earlier um, because we're all used to communicating on social media in real time, but we have to get information to our Planning Commission members in a timely fashion. And uh, that usually means a week ahead we uh, send the packets out, and we are an electronic uh, department and board, so we do push out information, but we like to do it in an organized fashion as a packet, and we really can't do that when, uh, when we're getting information the night before a meeting. Uh, that doesn't mean your um, input doesn't go into the record and isn't on file, but it's much harder, especially when there's such a high volume to get information to our members, so. Thank you. Jay. Trey Porter, DPW. I just want to, uh, to um, remind you that the technical comments that DPW makes are included in the planning and DPW folder, um, as well as state highway comments. There's a lot of technical comments. A lot of your questions can be answered by looking at those comments in terms of um, one ingress, one egress versus one entrance with both um, ingress and egress. You know, things like that, those are going to be contained in there and some of those questions could be answered. Um, obviously in this public forum we can answer those questions in person, but um, a lot of background information is there. Um, again, both State Highway and DPW and I certainly encourage you to, to take a look at those if, you, uh, if you're so inclined. 
Okay, thank Th you. Thanks, and I'll just thank you, everybody, including your department. You are our Department of Public Works. You know our roads better than anyone, so I, I think speaking for just a member of this commission, we, we do look at, at, uh, at, at these comments and, and your opinions matter, so thanks. It matter a lot. <laughs> okay, um, I have one other, one other um, point of business this morning. Yeah, right. I was Sorry, I think she would like to public comment. Very she, quick. Yeah, very quick. Very quick. Just when you said you wanted a study from them with the left and right turns, the beach traffic really wasn't, you know, can we get an estimation of what the beach traffic would be added to that study and not just like, you know, what happens on a daily yes, basis? Thank you. So, very quick question as well. Sergey? The same issue. Does they uh, commission a private um, traffic study, and I think one of them I read them, and the uh, direction, the recommendations were everything is fine now, everything will be fine now uh, later. Please proceed. Uh, is it possible maybe for the county or the state to do some kind of volume counts, uh, like when was the last volume count done? Uh, maybe if the next one can be done in the summer. That way we know exactly what's happening um, from the official government. Is it traffic in the, count part of their Counts are done in their... the summer. On yeah, he said he Saturday. did do one in June. Yeah. 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 They're done. He did one in June? Yep. Yes. Okay. So right. said. June of last year? Yes. Okay. In 21. Okay. I'll read into that. Let's see. Will there another one be done uh, this year as well? I believe, I believe Trey may. The man behind you might be Next year, next year I mean. <laughs> <laughs> next year. Trey might answer you behind. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So in discussions with the applicant, the, uh, it seemed to me the discussion was talking about May uh, 2023 for the next traffic count. And the reason we selected May is because you have some increase in summertime traffic as well as your, high, your, uh, your school traffic and, other, and commuter traffic and all that kind of come together a little bit in May. Mm -hmm. um, typically with traffic design, traffic planning, we don't look at worst case scenarios. You never plan for the, you know, the Memorial Day weekend, Friday or whatever it happens to be. Um, so with most traffic planning, we look at commuter traffic times and we look at the morning and afternoon rush. We wouldn't look at a, at a Sunday, Sunday evening on a, on a beach weekend. It's just impractical and not, not uh, correct to make a road design based on an absolute worst case scenario. You wouldn't plan, um, Route 18, Route 8, Route 8 roads. Um, I'm speaking for State Highway, but you you wouldn't plan those roads for if there was an accident on Route 50 and everything kind of came off and went went to local roads. So it's the same type of situation. We were looking at kind of May. Um, the Bats Neck fields should be up and operational at that point. There's new turf fields that are going to be installed at Bats Neck. Um, so those fields will have. That's part of the. That's part of the current background. When you hear in traffic planning, there's um, you know future projections on development, and, and that's that's part of it. Um, so we'll have those fields operational. There'll be um, uh, traffic counts that will include those. Uh, I think in May. I think we talked about uh, middle of May. Um, so. Okay. One other issue. Um, I was informed this morning that we're losing one of our commissioners. Uh, his term is up and it wasn't renewed and that was um, Art. And I just have to say that he was a tremendous asset to this board and um, he's gonna be missed. That's all I can say. Uh, I'm looking for my favorite. One more, if you don't mind, Madam Chair, I'd like to uh, praise and, and thank uh, QAC TV staff. Uh, last month's uh, discussion uh, that Bruce handled and, and Ted as well very well with all the traffic, vehicular or uh, electronic traffic. And today, uh, Ted and his colleague, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Marshall. Marshall, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you for managing the volume of emails, the voicemails, the That's television. Ted. That's Chris. Chris, sorry. And all the other aspects that are tremendous functional uplifts that have been um, evolving over the course of my tenure on this board. Um, so it's it's tremendous in, uh, efficiency gainer as well as public access point. So thank you for all you do for allowing that conversation to happen uh, in this forum. Thank Sorry. You. Uh, how about my favorite motion? Madam Chair, motion to adjourn. Second. Same move. Okay.